Okay. Looks like we're live. What? Uh, what welcome <laughs> to Kevin Chaos. And uh, let's try this again here. I don't know what happened a second ago. So I uh, started to get some healthy slash unhealthy bitching and moaning out of the way. Huh? So uh, moments ago, I did something, I don't know, irresponsible, childish, one might say. It was supposed to be the least painful of circumstances to occur. But instead, uh, yeah, apparently I uh, planted my foot down in anger and agitation. You know? Only to, on top of a needle, and jam it in my foot. First, I thought it actually directly hit the toe. Because of the size of the needle, I was greatly concerned that it was going to go right on the other side. But it didn't. It actually was just to the side of it. And I pulled it out immediately, put an ice pack on it immediately. I don't know shit about shit when it comes to health, though. So I call the paramedics or not emergency police and whatnot, say, do I need to get to a little hospital trip? Can I have somebody come check me and I'll do whatever, you know. As you guys know, I regularly go through drama. Um, police are very rarely helpful. Normally, it's near impossible to get police to the scene or anybody that really wants to handle anything, for one. But wouldn't you know, instead of paramedics, I got six policemen. Two or three cars. I only saw two, but I imagine usually, you know, that means three because it's usually two per car. Um, and they showed up before paramedics, I guess. Uh, I said, whoa, whoa, whoa. I was confused a little bit. You know, all these police and stuff. It's like, uh, did something happen? <laughs> uh, you know, I called and asked about a paramedic and maybe getting to a hospital if they thought that I needed that. Now, it gets stranger, folks. Not only... Uh, are police handling this and in way too many numbers. No wonder people are being shot and killed and dying all the goddamn time out here. They're sending all their agents to shit that doesn't concern police at all. But all right. Um, so all these police are here, and uh, one guy made it a point. He was trying to ask, but he wasn't fast enough about my knife. Already anticipated it and went to hand it to him. So he's already nervous from the get-go and everything. I made a couple jokes on his behalf. Uh, but so... Not only uh, are police handling this instead of paramedics, paramedics do eventually get on the scene while well, we're just sitting here, waiting, I guess. And they're talking to me and whatever about nonchalant nonsense, you know, shit that I'm related to. I mean, um, and so the paramedics get here and there's two of them uh, that actually walk up on foot. And here's where it gets concerning to me, folks. The whole reason I called was you either take me to a hospital or tell me that I don't need to go, right? You know, you let me know if this is a superficial injury or if this is something where I could have nicked something important. Apparently, there are no major arteries in the foot. I didn't know that for one. But um, what uh, the way that he put it, though, is I'm not allowed to give you my opinion. I, I had to ask three different ways and still couldn't get an answer. I said, so do I need to go to the hospital? I can't tell you that, he said. What the fuck? What is that, some liability thing? Like, you can't tell me as a medical professional... If I have medical needs or not? What? I guess because if I don't have, if I do have medical needs and you tell me no, then you're held liable and I might sue. But what about if I do? What could go wrong there? If you just automatically tell me yes and I don't, do you think you can get sued for that? For saying, I think it's in your best interest to go get checked out? Of course not, right? But this guy refused to give me an opinion one way or another. He said, it's entirely up to me if I choose to go to a hospital. All kinds of weird shit like that. You like my little staticky window? But I find that extremely strange. Everybody in the world is like, it seems worried about lawsuits and liability and stuff, and therefore everybody in the world does nothing for a job profession. What exactly, here's my question, folks. What exactly is a paramedic for? If not evaluating paramedical needs, right? You know, I, I mean, I'm outraged, but it's so hilarious, and I'm so mind-boggled, I don't know how to respond. You're a medical professional, okay. Let's establish that. Okay, cool. You're a paramedic, so you're a medic. You know things about medical shit, right? Okay. Do I need a hospital? I can't tell you that, sir. That's that's why you... That's why you were called? You know, to either automatically take me or give me an educated opinion, right? I'm either so critically fucked up and wounded that I need to go. Or I need to be looked at and seen. Dude didn't even look at my foot. He said, well, the fact that you're not bleeding trailed off a little bit. 
I said, sir, I don't know if you're playing with me or not, but uh, I did just tell you I just stepped off of an ice pack, right? Well, if it was anything serious, uh, you know, I mean, he didn't even say serious, but he pretty much insinuated it because, again, he wouldn't give me real answers. But, you know, one might think that the fact that I'm not still constantly bleeding. Okay, cool. You know, but I tried asking a couple different ways. Do you think I need a hospital? You know, uh... <laughs> I mean, it's numb. I stepped on ice after. I'm still on on a patch. It hurts a little bit but for different reasons, I'm sure. You know, uh, so what what exactly is a medic supposed to do? Do they only show up and automatically handle things? Here's what I'm curious about. Let's say my throat was slit, but like not to where I'm immediately bleeding out. I just happen to be bleeding from the neck in an area, right? Hypothetically speaking, a medic shows up, right? They say you're bleeding. Maybe. Maybe they decide not to look. We heard somebody's throat was slit. But we can't tell them to go to the hospital now. Because unknown. <laughs> what? You know, uh, I know we're the medically trained professionals and our job is to look, but we're not only not going to look, uh, we can't tell you if you should go or not. Can't? Or won't? What the fuck is a medic's job? What the fuck is six cops' jobs? To come out here over me, literally, on the call saying that I fucking stomped, and I did stomp quite, put all my body into it, on a fucking tech thingy. You know, uh, why did that take cops at all? Much less, or much more, six of them, you know, paramedics, why can't they give you an opinion? This is just weird shit to me. So I'm just going to add this in with everything else that's going to go into my documentary on how we live in a fucking corrupt, broken-ass, retarded system where a bunch of people get paid to sit on their fat fucking asses and do nothing. You know, be vampires and shit. You know, they take blood, but they have a hard time knowing. I imagine if they should give blood to people. <laughs> In case you're wondering, these are amazing. Not that you will be able to read it easily. The, look at that artwork, bro. Pizza crackers, garlic, and chive. That's a fucking wallpaper right there. Let me get my hand out of the way. In case someone thinks it looks cool. All you'd have to do is flip it. So, I don't fucking know. I know one thing, though. I'm at my rope's end. You get it? You get what I'm simulating? I just hung myself from the ceiling. <laughs> Purely humor, of course. I don't recommend anybody going out and harming themselves or others. I'm not a threat to myself or others, and I don't advocate anybody else be. But I do think life is pretty fucking outrageous. So, update. Here's where I'm at. Today, a mysterious bag with government logos was placed on my front house, uh... Doing that. One could assume what that is. However, one would be utterly stupid to go open it. If I go open that and it's about me, I've been served. If I don't, it's some random person's property who's littering and loitering on my shit. And it could be about anyone. I live with multiple housemates. I'm not expecting company. Yada, yada, yada. It's purely guesswork for me to assume and therefore touch something that doesn't belong to me and find out what's in that bag hanging from the door. Even though one can assume it might actually be about me. Things are better in my favor and not serving myself and leaving them to do it erroneously. So that's one thing to update. Two. I've recently received papers. I think it's the 18th or the 19th where I have to go to court over a place I lived almost two years ago. Just two months under the statute of limitations. That's right. For allegedly wielding a machete. Brandishing, no doubt. Look at me, folks. Well, I guess you can't really see my wrist too well, but I'm a skinny, fucking weak. This ain't anything super special. I mean, it's not bullshit, but it's not super special, right? Okay, so I'm just your fucking average, ordinary looking. You could pick on me and underestimate me if you want, especially if I'm wearing long sleeves, white guy, right? And I found a way, I guess, to brandish a machete. Do you know how big a machete is? How awkward that would be as a weapon, right? Okay, you know how heavy compared to every other fucking blade a sword is lighter than a machete? Okay, is it sinking through that this is retarded yet? Because its story gets even deeper. Because in the past I was also accused of yelling the n-word in the room full of people with my mother on the phone, same location. I had to put a restraining order out on the roommate. In fact, let me go ahead and give y'all a quick update on that. 
Might as well, since we're here. Because we do come prepared for any contingency and any opponent. Just because we're patient and kind, yes, we. Doesn't mean very much. Okay, so here's what I got. Let's see if my address is on here to try to block out someone or what. Not that people can't do context clues from all the many videos I upload. Or talking about a neighbor and talking about their address. Yeah, I don't... Okay. Uh, I don't think it's on here. If I give out my address by accident, oh, fucking well, I guess. Okay. Not that you'll be able to read it anyway. Oh, wow. Actually, that comes up almost perfect, don't it? Ah. Anyway. Warrant of arrest. Misdemeanor. Okay. Got cop handed this to me. I actually thought it was something entirely different. I don't know why you're here, gloated. Totally didn't. Had no idea something from a year and ten months ago was going to catch up. That's just two months under the statute of limitations for misdemeanors in Virginia of this class. Um, and that's all it says. Uh, and it has the guy's name, Javon Johnson. Uh, allegedly, that's the person with a sworn statement of who I'm against. I doubt very seriously he's taking this up. In fact, the guy's, one, very violent and mentally ill. And setting yourself up if you're coming against me after what you've done. And two, I've seen in the past, including the restraining order, which I filed first, his mom for him filed second, that other people need to do things for him, which means whoever the hell's accusing me ain't even him. We have here, I'm not going to go through everything here, but I just want to show that I'm a little bit prepared for some of the battles coming. I have the original leases from all these places, including the guy and the landlord I'm with now. Um, here is a... Don't worry about seeing too much. This will all come out later on. Um, but, uh... This is a protective order against a guy who would try to attack me in that home. This is a uh, very loosely written, again, you're not going to be able to see very much, but uh, it's uh, a signed statement from a different roommate saying that he witnessed even after I put the protective order out, the other roommate behaving violently. It would later be challenged in a unique way by Morgan Kettner White of ICT Services, who was screaming so loud and obnoxiously childish that she was drooling from her mouth and said uh, that I forged a signature. Mr. Baskus, the guy who witnessed and signed this piece of paper, actually came to me crying later saying he felt pressured. She bullied him. He didn't know what to do. And he cried to me. He didn't know what to do. And with that level of hostility and his schizophrenia, I imagine him to be honest. This is a guy who fights with ghosts and punch holes in walls and puts the TV up at the maximum volume just to quiet down some of the extra noises and voices in his head. And you have a woman who's supposed to be keeping take of your mental health and helping you out, screaming and bullying you at the top of her lungs. Yeah, I bet. So we kept this. We kept the accusation as well. We uh, have... An assault charge filed out, which we had done in the past that was never followed up on at all. You'd think this was following up on it, except for it's aimed directed at me. It says on the sworn statements of Javon Johnson. So we're ready for this. Um, in fact, um, I'm kind of glad it came around. What? Why would you be glad for more drama that could have been open? I'm glad you asked imaginary voice in my head, because that's a very good fucking question. And the answer is simple. Uh, because I'm working on a documentary as it is called Big Pharma Problems and Solutions. And it's not just Big Pharma, but about mental health issues particularly. Okay? Um, and one of the things is these this housing unit was called Cam G. And what that is is housing for the mentally ill. As the newest person there, I should have had the same rights as everybody else with, else with mental illness and the same considerations with those things. I mean, I'm supposed to consider schizophrenic swiping shit on the walls and not be upset, etc. Um, the people stealing from me while I don't have money to replace the food. And I'm supposed to swallow all that because all these people are mentally ill, as if there's anything we can do. Um, so that being said, why is it the new guy gets the boot? Because it's the quickest and easiest way to solve the situation. Why didn't you move me into another housing unit, etc. and so on? Do you have any idea of the long, lengthy waiting list to get into these houses? And it was the only place that living on disability that I would be able to afford actually building something. Maybe one day owning a car. It costs based on income, right? Okay, about half my check. Here, where I'm living now, and probably not for much longer, more on that later, um, it costs almost my entire check. So this is mental ill housing that knew I was mentally ill. Obviously, this is what they do. Coming into the place, decided to try to penalize me and say that I was harassing them. And now what? Courts? That's pretty interesting. This is the original printout that says, uh, and here's the exact law code for those of you interested. 
Um, the following has taken place has been reported. What they don't say on this is that I reported someone else, not the other way around. Smoking in the house, cigarettes and marijuana. I don't even smoke cigarettes, so people are dumb. Never get a retarded knife. You know exactly what happens. They carve their lungs out like a fucking jack-o'-lantern, okay? Um, brandishing a weapon. Walking around your home with a machete to intimidate your roommate after a previous conflict. Now, just hearing the description here. Uh, let's just all assume that occurred, which it didn't, Okay. But let's say at any point in time I decided to hold this item, just to hold, okay? Even in the idea of intimidation. Let's see how that might look according to state law. Subsection 18.2-282.1. Brandishing a machete or other bladed weapon with intent to intimidate. It shall be unlawful for any person to point, point, okay? Hold, okay, hold, or brandish a machete. Or any weapon with an exposed blade 12 inches or longer with the intent of Im intimidating, sorry, with the intent of intimidating any person or group of persons and in a manner that reasonably demonstrates, reasonably demonstrates, reasonably, you got to add some sly comment with it, you got to add a little wave, you got to point it at somebody that reasonably demonstrates that intent to intimidate. This section shall not apply, you ready for it? Any person engaged in excusable or justifiable self justifiable self defense. So essentially, if I was under attack, and the man is five times bigger than me, even if I chose to, which obviously I did not, it would be a pure miracle to try to doctor some shit. But if I chose to, at any given time, pick up something that I did, in fact, own, having been homeless before this housing, right? Complete with the backpack, complete with the machetes, the pocket knives, the whole bit. Why is it this is the only thing mentioned? Because it's the only thing that can make someone look bad. Uh, it also is fine hair splitting when the contract says, and I made sure to get rid of it immediately just so that they couldn't cause any problems. What the classification, what is a weapon and what's a tool? Because to me, that's a tool. It's very inefficient as a weapon. I mean, if you got a lot of upper arm strength and you're willing to, like, exhaust yourself, imagine if there are multiple opponents. It's not a fucking wise weapon. But whatever. It is a wise tool. You can use it to fucking split branches. You can use it to split wood. It is a fucking camping tool, but whatever. Now, were I ever to have one of these things, though, even if I were holding it or brandishing it, were I attacked, were I put in a confrontational situation, and I'm not telling him, for example, I'm not overemphasizing I'm going to chop your head off or some shit like that, then just the visual illusion is a deterrent. And that would be justifiable self-defense to let someone else believe that their own fucking violence and chaos will backfire. However, uh, a person who violates this section is guilty of a class 1 misdemeanor or if the violation occurs in any public, private, or religious elementary, middle, or high school, including buildings or grounds upon public property within a thousand feet of such school property, he is guilty of a class 6 felony. It's about to get really interesting, yeah, ready? You must dispose of this weapon, she means tool, immediately. Once done so, you need to provide confirmation. Not only did I dispose of it immediately, I made sure the case managers watch the item leave the property. Um, this will be documented. Boy, I hope so, because so did I. If the machete resurfaces at any point on Cam G property, how do you... What, oh, if this machete, love the wording, because I was going to say, how do you know it's the same machete? And you fucked yourself entirely there. If I was a ghetto hardened street thug with all this shit for you against me, all I gotta do is grab a new machete. The fuck? Right? If this machete, this machete resurfaces at any point, your housing will be in jeopardy. Now, first off, not only did it never come back, I got expelled from the house anyway. If. Now let's go from if. This was signed by housing specialist HUD811 Angela Walters. Complete with her signature for witchcraft. Guess what, folks? Already cast. Guess what, folks? She caught cancer and died. I don't feel bad. She destroyed my life. She took away my livelihood. She lost hers. Not going to feel bad. She hurt herself. She hurt others. Doing harm. Harm to other people and harm against yourself. Okay, so tell me how. Let, let's follow along so far. This is just one of many cases I'm going through just to give you an idea that I'm fine. This will be taking place the 18th or the 19th. Even if, by some miracle, this is a, a misdemeanor. So even if I had jail charges, which the cop handed me the paper told me already that it's not, that I won't be. Um, it would be, what, 30 days? 30 days with good behavior is 15 days? That ain't shit. Okay, but now this, according to this paper, though, 
if, only if, okay, this will be documented if the machete resurfaces at any point, your housing will be in jeopardy. So it's not to say that your housing is in jeopardy already. It's if anything further happens, your housing will be in jeopardy. We have reports of illegal drug activity. I, I reported my own fucking roommate. He was burning holes in the floor with cigarettes and shit. Any violations of this nature in the future will result in immediate lease termination. If your lease is terminated, you'll be banned from the premises, the property, and all other properties, including parking lots, grassy areas, and sidewalks. It'll be considered a criminal offense should you return. Oh, I wish I would have noticed this if you have any questions. I would have done that way long ago. But I dropped it. I was a nice chap. The lady did catch cancer and die. Wonder who's taking it up for her. That person is next. Nevertheless, so if something worse will happen. Now, what date is this, you might ask? December 22nd. Two weeks later, January 7th, this letter serves as a 30-day lease cancellation. So what was all this if shit? Right? People don't do their jobs. And the point in mentioning this wasn't so much to go over each of these given points because there's plenty more I could go on and this is the point where I officially stop. But the point in mentioning this is that the world is very challenging. They will take advantage of you. Okay? Especially if you have mental health illnesses okay i should have theoretically the same rights as everyone else but quite frankly i'm about to lose my home again over something stupid my landlord actually physically attacked me i recorded a short clip put it on youtube then he called police on me police i got no charges i got no problems but the guy wanted to try to be so manipulative as to put a restraining order let me tell you protective orders don't work i put a protective order on that guy in the other house what happened nothing i put a protective order on the guy who broke down my door with a sledgehammer what happened nothing Landlords and shit didn't follow their leases then. For me here, why would they have in other locations? And the point is that I'm advocating for mental health rights. And there's enough evidence and enough occurrences to show that this is almost normal. People will take advantage of it. People are making mad money off of the less fortunate. The other roommate that the woman could scream at and drool and put him into tears coming to me apologizing later. I'm sorry for lying, bro. I'm so sorry. There's a reason. Because the man is schizophrenic. And according to you and some other people, these people can't think for themselves, you know? So they need you to be able to have all this authority and nasty fire and screaming at the top of your lungs and shit to make up for the authority and the mentality that they allegedly don't have, right? But that often comes with an ego complex and extortion, you know, where people get to take whatever money they want. My landlord's a good example. For example, when he was cashing my SSI check, he took $40 without permission came to me after the fact, gave me the remainder of my money and said, I took $40 for a delivery fee. I hope that's okay. What do you mean I hope? It already happened. And if it wasn't, what do I even say back? Not a goddamn thing. It's not okay. But what are you going to do? I'll learn from the internet. Meanwhile, also similarly, my roommate here is learning disabled. Who's going to protect him? Who's going to help him? You know? When these guys can't talk for themselves, can't speak for themselves, hot water went out here for a month, you know? Running away to live with your brother, to vacation for a little bit. That's not solving the problem. Coming to me and talking to me private, as the roommate does. Carl, the landlord, ain't gonna do anything. Never has, never will. We might as well just deal with it. I disagree with the might as well just deal with it part, but he was right about fighting a pointless battle, and that Carl's a fucking maniac. He already ran away from one of Carl's other homes because there were homicidal people there. Well, there were homicidal people here and Carl didn't help me either. How much of this shit do I have information and evidence on, you may ask? Well, none of the roommate's conversations for real, but the roommate is selling drugs out of this house. I wonder if that's on the lease. I wonder how many times over I could have been protected by the landlord doing the right thing and following his own rules. So the point in mentioning all this is I'm about to have a buttload of court cases and shit coming up, and I'm going to win most of them. It doesn't stop me having a roof over my head. Obviously, if I'm holding you to charges or defending myself and then honing you to charges against things, you're not going to feel very generous to want to suddenly be a law-abiding citizen and rent me your home out further. Now, he may have pushed my hand. These people may be forcing me to be able to handle things legally. You know, I have to now. No choice. I didn't even ask for the Cam G uh, machete incident uh, court hearing. But by all means, I'll take advantage of it to highlight the Cam G disaster scenario. That they are not taking care of mentally ill people. That they are extorting mentally ill people. That they are screaming at mentally ill people, right? Okay? 
that they're coercing mentally ill people to lie through volume and through torture, abusive statements, and he has to come back and cry to me. I'm mentally ill. Where are my rights? Where's my advocator to go scream at the universe and act like a child and do things that should be considered verbal assault and harassment and get away with it scot-free because I'm so autistic? And I am that I don't do a good enough job speaking for myself, but I clearly do a better job than my surroundings, than the learning disabled roommate here or the schizophrenic there. And a big part about what I'm doing, if you don't really appreciate the chaos, and I know a lot of you are really curious about my videos and life recently and how can I constantly attract drama and the answer is simple because unlike the mentally ill average person or even the same completely sober-minded stable average person you know uh, there is a scene in the fight club that demonstrates it reasonably well that everybody's kind of caught in a routine of how to behave they're taught socially a way to behave they turn the other cheek and everybody takes advantage of that. So one of the things Tyler Durden had his people go do is, I want you to go start a fight. Basically, go break the rules. Break out of those patterns. Because um, here's the thing. Other people are going to take advantage of you constantly. Constantly. You're a pushover, they'll take advantage of that. You're mentally ill, they'll take advantage of that. You're a sweetheart, they'll take advantage of that. You're passive-aggressive, they'll take advantage of that. Bipolar, all of it. Anything and everything that they can. You will be gaslit. They will talk to you in such a way that they will harass you, try to trick you into talking negative back, right? That's gaslighting. And then they're going to use that to say, I've been harassed or I feel danger for my life, etc. and so on. If you ever claim that, that's not going to help you very much. But once you've both already argued and they only show the part of the argument where you talked nasty, not only did you not make threats on the person's life, but you were quite direct and quite aggressive, or maybe your paragraphs were a little bit long to someone with autism trying to be thorough and communicate. Well, but later on, much like um, these documents here, it's going to become harassment. Okay, there was a maintenance guy. The only thing that they could have on me at all. The only thing they have pictures attached to, and it's my text messages. And I went overboard. Yeah, I said a little bit more than I should, but here's the thing. Just like this house, there was a contract. We signed. We agreed. According to them, I'm not allowed even to change the battery in a smoke detector. So when I don't sleep for up to 13 days as it is, you got schizophrenics blaring over here. You got another violent tenant over there. Nobody's doing anything to protect my rights as a mentally ill person living here. <sighs> um, now we have a smoke detector going off for eight days in a row. Beep! At random intervals, and you know how that goes. Um, everybody's had a battery done, a smoke detector. It's like almost unpredictably we're going to... Beep! Freak the shit out of you and then just stay up for a while when you think it's finally dead. <laughs> Only to be surprised later in the most inopportune, anxious, filled moment. Um, so, uh, you know, now I'm not only sleeping for weeks, but uh, I, I've been asked for the maintenance. I did what I was supposed to do. Call maintenance when anything happens to the house. They are to repair this. They should repair it within one day. One day. Guess what wasn't true? Um, oh, I'm going to come by tonight, the guy said. Lied. Something came up. I'll come by tomorrow. Lied. What, after four or five lies, I blew the fuck up at him, and among other insults, I said it don't take a rocket scientist to unscrew a light bulb. At no point was I told I was harassing. At one point, I was told, don't text again. And I sent one final, well, technically it was three messages, but at the same exact time, um, message to say, well, why the fuck would I want to talk to you again anyway? You're incompetent, stuff like that. You know, uh, I called maintenance for maintenance purposes, and I can't even get that shit done. Something along those lines. Um, I'm not going to go through the whole thing with you here. Um, but yeah, that's the best they got on me. Some autistic kid lost his emotional cool after being subjected to all kinds of hostile situations, to constant volume, to physical violence, to shit on the walls and craziness, to his food being stolen and being hungry, to... To what? A maintenance guy not doing his job, contributing to even more stress, and what, he lost his worded cool. Someone was so upset by text messages that they needed to frame me for yelling an N-word and carrying a machete. Are you out your goddamn gourd? I think the craziest part about this story is that my mother was on the phone during this whole fucking thing. And, again, if I were going to use such a word, which strategically, that might be a word to use sometimes. In very peculiar scenarios, mind you. 
if someone's trying to bully and have their upper hand. It's a, it's a word that makes people lose their entire mental rationality, their entire emotional cool, and that puts you in control, technically, if someone can be that trigger. So I won't argue to say that the word has no use or that there isn't a moment ever that I might not use it to have upper hand because I can see myself having a scenario where ultimately, psychologically, that's a powerful fucking weapon, but definitely didn't happen in this scenario. And it definitely didn't happen in the presence of my fucking mom. That's insane. And it definitely didn't happen if everybody in the house but me is black. That's also very fucking insane. You know, I already almost got my ass handed to me by this big brawly motherfucker who, guess what, was selling drugs out the house. What? Yeah, that's right. Out of both locations, it's kind of similar, actually. Uh, what am I supposed to do with any of that? These videos help me to stay structured, stay focused, stay having a battle plan, stay from being over emotional, and focus on what I need to. As you can tell with the chaos around me, my room is being packed up. I'm preparing for the worst. Today there was a magical bag with government symbology on my porch. It's staying there. Not going to serve myself, whatever the fuck happens next. Almost didn't answer these cops for the medic thing. Because I'm going to be smart, you know? The world's trying to take me out one way or another. Make their money. I'm not interested in playing along anymore. I've lost my homes. I've lost my money. I've lost health. I challenge you to show me the doctrine on how one mental illness, schizophrenia, say, is more important than autism, ADHD, bipolar, OCD, PTSD. I challenge you to show me that one person's brain is more important than another person's brain, one person's heart, one person's life, one person's color. I challenge you to show me that that is more important than someone else in essentially the same circumstances, but maybe with a different mental illness or a different skin color. Like my landlord, Carl. He basically, after the guy was violent with the sledgehammer on the door, you know what the fucker told me? He basically told me, you need to understand he's black. But in so many words. You need to understand where he comes from. How he was raised. What's that mean? You know what it means, folks. A black man being raised in a white man's world, having to bully and intimidate and violently coerce their way through life because allegedly, white devil be keeping them down. And obviously not. You got free college systems that only apply to black people. You can make whatever rhetoric and speculation, but there are black people that attend the white colleges, so bullshit. You just gotta do a good job, don't act out, ain't screaming in class, and all the other stereotypes that are also choices, really, that people might choose to do that are not appropriate in the workplace. Having hair that can't be put in a hair bun and having dreads out to your penis is not appropriate. It's not because you're black. It's because you chose a hairstyle that is not appropriate for making fucking sandwiches in sanitary conditions, etc. People's blame game and shift and all this chaos is fuck. I'm, I'm so done with Earth, man. I told you I was going to bitch and rant. And that's exactly what I plan on fucking doing. <laughs> The world that has this little thing going on, and I live in Portsmouth, Virginia, so it's definitely true out here where there's some black supremacy shit going on. And we're not really supposed to be able to talk about this, so I have to say stuff like, uh, according to me, black supremacy is a real thing. According to me, and my speculation, and my observations, and my personal life, my personal feelings, and my personal thoughts, all those uh, little, uh, what do they call them, disclaimers, um, so, according to me, and I'm no professional, I'm no law enforcement, I'm no doctor, I am not a black person, um, I'm not a politician, I'm not even white, I'm French, so I really have no say-so, but according to me, that haven't been said, black supremacy is at an all-time high. You know, we've already changed enough of the laws to where you're not getting in trouble for child support, child support payments anymore. You're not going back to jail for alcoholism. Hell, even the terrorist uh, in the fucking, uh, I called her a terrorist. She called me a Karen video. Um, not wearing a seatbelt, driving over curbs, drinking and driving for medical transportation system, mind you. She didn't get in trouble. Cop didn't breathalyze or nothing. Cop even made sure as to go as far along as to tell me there's nothing you can do about someone not wearing a seatbelt and recklessly driving you around town. Like, he said, that's a secondary offense. Without charging her with a first crime, there's no reason to give her a secondary offense. Well, wow. They've really changed their laws advocating for the alleged repression of these sorts of lives. No. Okay, that just means, first off, white people can go do the same crimes now. That's fucking dumb and retarded, but whatever. I'm having a bit of a problem with it. 
and my way of combating both the medical system and the racist world, since you can't beat it, not exactly. I've already talked about systemic. What is systemic racism? Systemic black supremacy. Let me explain. Oh, it's because I was black. I've watched four cartoons in the past 24 hours that made a joke on that, including C-Lab and American Dad. They were the most recent. Is it because I'm black? Allie G in the, in the house, the movie. Is it because I is black, says a white man from England, dressed up in makeup to look more black, to make a comedy about some of these things we can't normally do, but it makes it very obvious that it's a comedy that way. Meanwhile, were I to try anything like that from a YouTube perspective, it would be an instant ban. So people have been trained not to fit in with white people, and that's a problem. That's a problem. Not, not because we want you to be us or any dumb shit like that. You know, but because you're separating yourself on purpose and then claiming, Oh no, I've been excluded from the herd. Meanwhile, I called that guy a stupid N-word. And by I, I mean the black person in my position talking to a white guy. I said, shut up and get... That's appropriate behavior, right? That's the way we all get praised. That's the way to get a job. I don't fucking think so. Do you think I can talk like this at the workplace? Or that I know my boss is my master no matter what fucking color he is? When I go to work... I'm there to work. When the boss tells me to do something, that's within reason anyway. That's what I do if I want to keep earning the cheddar and go home and come back again for more. That's how work works. And I'm not making any stereotypes to say black people don't understand work, not at all. But I am making the cause and correlation that if people want to constantly separate themselves and blame other people, other skin colors, other groups, then they better be prepared to take responsibility. First off, okay, go, go, go find a job that doesn't require that. Working home alone on the internet. White people have the same problem, it's just a little different. We don't commonly have dreads. Well, I mean, they're actually, it's more common than ever since insane clown posse was a thing in the 90s. But, typically speaking, that is not our hairstyle or culture, right? Or even texture to be able to properly support. Um, so, the white version of the same argument is uh, you can't be a goth in the workplace. There's one store, maybe two to go to. Hot Topic or Spencer's. And that really depends on your state and if they exist. Otherwise, wearing black nail polish, as I scraped off earlier, and you might remember from a former video because I'm about to go to court in six, seven days, um, that's not appropriate. It's enough for black people around here to ask me if I'm a faggot. Not like it's any of their concern, really. You're just starting shit for no reason. And what if I said yes? What if I said no? What difference does it make? Are you asking me out? Are you hitting on me, sir? Can't say that, can you? Now, it's a fight. But aren't those... Are you trying to get me to get to that point to fight anyway? Stirring some shit? All right. <laughs> so the white version of things is being goth. You can't have uh, fingernails. Now, white people do also like to have long hair, typically. You're going to see a lot of people with short hair, but there's a lot of white working class people, right? Um... But I personally love having long hair. It was hot as fuck and the landlord didn't want to take care of the heating and cooling properly. And I didn't want to keep having to like thermostat pick the lock or anything clever. You know, so I cut mine off for now and it's already grown back extremely fast actually. But typically I love my hair long. The first time I ever cut it out of my own choice was after being an adult. When I have the choice instead of a parent, right? And when I was working for the shoe department in Pembroke Mall, Virginia Beach, Virginia. It was literally called the shoe department. The company's called Shoe Show Incorporated. Shoe, the EPT department. That's the name of the store. I know it's really dumb. Everybody's always like, which one? And I'm like, the shoe department. It's like no more clear than the last time I said the title. <laughs> um, and they loved me working there. And the only reason why they hired me, she said, I kept coming and they didn't hire me, you know? And I kept coming back and checking. Any opportunities yet? Any opportunities yet? One, that's a big way to get a job. It's not something your average African American is doing. He's assuming he's being judged for being black and not showing up to talk to the managers first thing in the morning. Consistently over and over and over and showing a real interest in this opportunity. That's a huge fucking difference. Automatically assuming judgment. But, And I'm not to say that it's all their fault either, but they're taught and they teach this themselves and they teach their kids at a very young age. Don't trust the white devil. They are the white devil. What the fuck, right? Don't ever think... You know, like, so there's never going to be any positive relationship there at all whatsoever. You're already taught this is a fucking demon you're working with. To expect pain, trauma, misfortune. To expect to be swindled, to be con artists, to, for everything to be a manipulative deal, etc. 
That's a devil, okay? You're taught to talk different from a fucking white guy. By all means, you know, if you don't want to be understood. As we slowly adapt and learn the slang, change your language again so that no one can communicate with you. Or that people might judge you as some stereotype. Again, that's not me, but it would make sense that stereotypes for calling someone ignorant, say, um, are because people are deliberately breaking English to separate themselves from white people. And I've had Africans explain this shit to me. It is specifically for, and there's an episode of South Park as well on this, they went from saying in the house, but then white people said that, to in the hizzy, to in the his house, but again, white people did that. There are white fans of Snoop Dogg after all, to in the flippity floppity floop. Obviously, that's purely a South Park joke and never happened on that one. But the exaggeration and hilarity is real. Every time harmony happens, every time fitting in happens, people go out of their way to fucking change it on purpose. Oh, well, we were starting to get along. Can't have that. You know, they started to understand our slang. So we had to take our, open the dough to the car to go to the stow. I, And technically all of that's real language now. It's a pigeon language, Ebonics. Um, you know, if it's a legible language, it is a language. You know, if people can understand one another, it is a language. It don't matter how you reword it. And the word Ebonics is not just a derogatory or insulting term. It's a term for kind of a compilation of languages that sub in slang and English and such. Which... Which they called pigeons, the pigeon language, and it's, it's basically like uh, like when we don't have a word for something and we borrow from other languages, and over time it becomes a very well spoken, very common thing. Um, like uh, Schadenfreude is a German word for the happiness of the misfortune of others. Like if someone drops something and you chuckle, and that's fucked up, right? <laughs> like the uh, a waitress and to use a borrow from an Avenue Q song, um. It was literally called Schadenfreude, the, the song S E H A D E N F R E U D E. Schadenfreude or Schadenfreude. And uh, the song points out Have you ever clapped when a waitress falls and drops a tray of glasses? And ain't it fun watching figure skaters falling on their asses? Don't you feel all warm and cozy watching people out in the rain? That's Schadenfreude. People taking pleasure in your pain. So, uh, very crazy concept. Also crazy we don't have a word here, but were we to regularly implement this word, English would change. Were we to continue to borrow from Latin, continue to borrow from other things, and English is kind of a language like that anyway. But if we came away from the many, many languages, uh, the very many rules that we have placed on English and how it works, it would become a pigeon when combined with all of this other information. So the same thing would happen. So I'm not trying to slander or insult anybody there. But the point is, if you're deliberately talking different, why would you fit in? And if you're not doing it to be cool and set a new standard and getting everybody to join you, it's not working, buddy. If you deliberately dress different, you know, I don't care where it comes from. The belting of the pants below the ass, for example. You know, there are a lot of information that's lost on people. And there's a couple of reasons why people still do it. The first of the reasons of, of why it was even invented was in prison by people that were gay. To denote who the the bottom, the one who takes it up the rear end was, they would expose their rear end. That's actually where it gets from. I don't know at what point it got into like some uh, gangster thing, but I do understand the function of it for a gangster. You know, having pants that are too big, you can hide guitars. We've seen it on American's Dumbest Criminals. Um, a whole guitar down your leg, and you could do that pimp walk, right? And it just looks like you're cool, and you're walking and strutting with a style, but in all actuality, the reason why you're wearing pants too large, or possibly sweatpants as well, is so that you can fit entire guitar necks, or maybe you can hide your weapons better, and stuff like that, or a whole baseball bat, you know, or something like that. And that's not to say, again, that all African Americans are criminals, or that all people use it for this purpose, but it's to say, well, hey, okay, cool, maybe it's not just an aesthetic chain, maybe it's not just a, um, a, a, a sexuality statement uh, for identity, um, but it also serves an actual function. You have a lot more space. Of course, to any old person looking, pull your goddamn pants up. To watch, uh, I, and it's really funny though, in a way, on some criminals. You know, when I stayed out at uh, an Effingham, uh, and uh, I was in a hotel, and uh, it's in Norfolk area, I believe, um, and. There was gang calls with the rolling of the seas and shit, the clack and whatnot, you know, the whole bit. And someone saw my witchcraft symbols up in the window, and to a gangster, a five-pointed star is one gang, and a six-pointed star is another gang. Instead of uh, 
a fucking religion or a spiritual belief or just a goddamn drawing by some kid you put it up in his fucking window because it looked cool. But whatever. Now, I actually got G-checked and attacked over that by a different group of people. Um, apparently the five and the six are against one another. Well, of course, if you're a goddamn gang, but what else on this piece of paper insinuates that? There's no codes, there's no fucking numbers, there's no set name, no... You're a fucking retard is what you are. But whatever. Um, technically speaking, though, it's going to be seen as me repping both opposite gangs, so I'm faking both and both get to be pissed off at me for no fucking reason. Quite similarly, though, guys saw this in the window, crack! as if he just got done inhaling through the glass pipe. Crack. Um, bad joke, but is it bad? So the, uh, the guy, like, stirs shit, walks by my window. I can feel the fucking hate and the anger. It's like, well, it's alarming in a way. I can fucking feel that pressure in the air. Someone wishes great fucking harm. They got pissed the fuck off. Now, what was interesting, though, was the only thing that probably saved my life. This door is flimsy. I'm in a Norfolk hotel the whole bit. I mean, if you want in here, you're getting in here. <laughs> but what pretty much saved my life is he bangs on the door and tries to get in. And he gets frustrated trying to hold up his pants. No lie. 100% true store. He tried several times. Fuck, shit. And trying to pull up his pants, tripping drunk probably over his own feet, trying to keep his pants up and having trouble breaking down the door because his pants don't fit. True story. So there's a lot of confusing shit. Now, I've spoken a little bit on some stereotypes here. Keep in mind they are only stereotypes and don't apply to everybody. Now, but if you want to hate Whitey or Frenchie over here, hi, how you doing? Um, you're going to have to keep in mind that a lot of the separation, a lot of your anger, a lot of the fucking choices you're making are your choices. The, the, the separation is your separation. The choice is your choice. The anger is your emotion and purely yours. And what you do or don't do anything about it with it is up to you. You know, at what point does it come white devil's fault? I'm standing up for everything in my life right now. One day I'm going to die and maybe a little younger than were I to live to be a healthy, ripe old person. But it's worth something to me, don't you understand? Terrorists and tyrants, people abusing mentally ill. You got gangs everywhere. The government's one giant fucking gang, you know. You got COVID scares and false cures and shit. Um, and possibly real cures. I don't know who to believe, do you? You know, but uh, I know that there's a lot of con artists taking advantage of the COVID nightmare right now. Um... And that doesn't make me want to trust our officials any more than it wants me want to trust our con artists when our officials have also given a lot of contradictory and constantly changing information. You know, the paper mask is ineffective as shit. It's 100% ineffective. You know, uh, if anything sort of, I think they call it an N95 or something like that, isn't going to help you. So, you know, there's a lot of speculation on... Um, who we can trust, who we can listen to. But everybody in the world, my point is, if you let them, will manipulate you, will con you, will make money off of you. And so far, I'm standing up to, what, a landlord? I got to fight previous tenant ship uh, over a machete-wielding incident, which hopefully might actually give me access to these houses and things again. That would be very beneficial. It would be sweet. Well, otherwise, it's just a big waste of time where I'm, I'm spending time. I don't get jail charges. And no one ever learns or grows anyway. But we'll wait for the documentary to greatly and in detail show every document we've received, every photograph we've ever taken. If you think I didn't take pictures of the residence I was in, you're wrong. We have pictures of every cigarette burn in the fucking floor. Go ahead and blame me. I don't even smoke. Give me a test, bitch. I don't want to smoke. Never smoke. Very proud anti-smoker. They make me fucking sick. I smoke weed from time to time. That's about it. And it doesn't make me nauseous, and secondhand shit doesn't bother me. So by all means, smoke weed, dear me. But if you're chain house smoking cigarettes in the house where we're not allowed it with no fucking ventilation and shit, and you're burning holes into the property, by all means, I'm going to say something. So I have photographs of all this stuff, too. You know, it, it'll be fine. But I'm where I have to stand up for everybody. What about the next mentally ill person in my shoes? What about the other person who's been fighting for over a year and a half and hasn't got a single medication yet, hasn't got a, a psychiatrist, hasn't got a therapist, hasn't got any help that they need? And then what happens, because that's the vote I'm in, where they try to make you out to be a criminal and a bad guy, and you've done nothing but ask for help on being a superior person, right? How to do better, how to feel better, how to comply with whatever the fuck everybody else thinks you need to do, if they think you need to do it, but this is the standard everybody believes, you know? Um... So it ain't like, for lack of trying, that I haven't reached out to do even better. So let's say that I am mentally ill and I am a criminal, hypothetically speaking, and I'm wrong. Well, look at all the ways I tried to be right. And if I am the mentally ill, then you can't blame me at all. And in every one of these houses, not only uh, is the KMG housing specifically for people with mental illness, that means you had a case manager, my case manager, set this up for you. 
You had someone advocating for me, a professional, not me acting irate, a perfectly sane individual whose job is to do this shit. Advocated for me, found this housing with you, let you knew my mental illnesses in advance, and you decided to penalize me for something that I'm protected on and need to get into your housing. Good luck, buddy. <laughs> So I have to stand up for other people that might find themselves in the same situation with room for growth, you know? Other humans suffering some anxiety, suffering some depression from time to time, you know? They might they might have a little bit of bipolar, you know? Look out the window and I pay attention whenever I hear any noise. Chaos always, you know? You know, uh, and, and then what happens when they try to make you out to be a criminal over some speculative shit of which there's zero proof? You lose your home, you lose money, you lose time. You can't build anymore, no getting a license anymore, no getting a car, no ever building anything for yourself. You're living paycheck to paycheck just to have a roof over your head in exchange for extortion somewhere else now. People don't know what the fuck Asperger's and mentally, mental illness is. They think that they have all these rights in place and all they have to do, technically speaking, is come up with some lie that they feel that you're a threat to yourself or others. But let me in, let you in on a little secret there too. I've tried to go into the hospital four times this year. Couldn't get in. Do you know why? I'm not a threat to myself or others. Do I feel lowly? Sometimes. Do I take as much precautions from danger as I should? Only sometimes, still. I actually encourage, clearly, look at these videos. A lot of dangerous shit that could get me murdered. Play your cards wrong, but... Hey, I'm alive so far! You know, but unless you actively have a knife out and go running at a nurse, pretty much. Or you're a kid that has uh, no rights so a parents and adults and shit speak for you, then it don't matter what mental illness you have. Unless they can actively see that I'm a threat to myself or others, and I've proven this for 100% fact, not only four times have I not gotten it, okay? But one of those times, uh, actually this was longer ago, so it's not one of those specific times, but a different time, I drew a comic. Dude's literally hanging himself with a noose, wearing the football jersey with the number zero on it. I don't get much more clear about depression and suicidal ideation. You can write, I wish I was dead next to it. Leave it in plain sight. Continue to doodle in a frenzy with your chicken scratch, overlapping, psychotic type handwriting and such. None of it matters. None of it. That's pure speculation. They can assume that you're drawing. It's just some emo shit, I guess. I'm... Um, but uh, that's not suicidal. That's art. Unless I actively go to attack someone or hurt myself in your presence, nobody gives a flying fuck about helping the mentally ill. Nobody cares about getting you into any kind of fucking mental treatment. You have to pretty much be a criminal for them to use the mental health thing and then you're fucking fried uh, living in a hospital for a long duration. That's how I once had a family member do that. They were failing very badly with legal matters, so they tried to make it out to be mental matters. They were failing there, too. The guy was able to advocate for himself pretty well, for the most part. And they used any given wiggle room on mental illness, any statement that they could, to just keep him there and make money. That's the world we live in. So we have to make a documentary on this, folks. We have to it, it, interview doctors, interview nurses, interview emergency paramedics, interview police officers... We're going to have to encourage situations where if people are already wrong, let them be wrong so that we can film it and that we can acquire data and we can say, hey, this is actually a very common occurrence that happens all over Virginia, to say the least, and maybe there'll be other people to help contribute to these projects that people are extorted. I once saw like the world's black, first black Navy pilot or something, first black something, uh, in regarding airplanes and shit and military. I always get the branches of the military because I'm very anti all that shit. I don't believe in power the way that other people have it set up. I'm confused, but anyway, he's bragging about or complaining about all that, and they're just torturing the shit out of this guy. Is it because they're white and he's black, or because people just don't fucking like doing their job? And anybody in power, let me say that clearly, anybody of any color in power typically, eventually, abuses it. They rush to the exit of what their former patient, former client, etc. What worked them? They don't make a personal rapport. They don't build a relationship with you. So, uh, I give all my patients with bipolar and ADHD, Cyprexa, and Depakote. Well, I'm unfamiliar with Cyprexa. Give me a printout. I'll make an educated decision. Depakote, I can't take. Both me and my brother are allergic to. 
Doctor hears non-compliance and stuff. The food actually said, well, I'll check back in on you. Maybe you'll change your mind. Comes back 10 minutes later. So, are you willing to take that Depakote? No, I'm not willing to take it. Then I cannot help you. These are the things. I can't bring a recording back there, unfortunately. You can't bring a fucking camera into the ER section where they're watching mentally ill and or violent people. You can't. Even if I had my body cam, you've already switched out clothing. You know, I've got one that looks like a fucking pin that I like to hang on my neck. You have to give away all your shit. So there is no coming back with records when it comes to the inside of hospital facilities and stuff, too. For example, um, being kicked out of a place while in horrible pain, passing out in, uh, in homelessness, fainting out in the fucking sunlight, sweating out nutrients you don't even have from water you're not drinking. You know, get to a hospital, you say, fuck, I'm in pain. Some fat bitch, I didn't call her that, mind you. But you'll understand in a second. Decides to be offended that I said fuck. You can't cuss at me! You can't cuss in here! <laughs> Sorry. It was obnoxious and I irritated myself just then too. So, guess who didn't get any medical help? I got banned from the hospital, in fact, for trying to stand up for my rights. They told me I couldn't go onto the hospital property ever again. In fact, since it's pretty much the only hospital, borderline only hospital in Virginia, Bon Secours, I'm not allowed any medical treatment for life over using a swear word over some fat, sensitive retard. And I didn't even call her those names. I just said, fuck I, Kevin Chaos. I, me, I'm in pain. Fuck, this hurts. Ow, shit, right? But small-minded imbeciles, you know, without that cushion, the blubber to protect her walnut brain... It's hard not to be irritated, folks. So we, we got to document all this shit. We got to make sure everybody's hip. And if we really are going to talk about systemic anything, which is retarded, it isn't systemic racism, it's systemic power. Because black people have perfectly worked their way up and into these positions. You've had black presidents. You've got... Uh, which, uh, fucking... Let's see if I can even bring up some of these people's names. Boop. Yeah, Kamala Harris. I knew she was black. I just didn't want to say the wrong name, and then someone fact-checked me. But I knew I knew what I was fucking talking about. You got Kamala Harris, Vice President of the United States, okay? In a building called the White House. So what the fuck systemic shit, huh? What? What do you have? Nothing. It's, it's a power issue. It's not a racial issue anymore. If it's a racial issue, the issue is that uh, whites are being persecuted. Straight white male, I'm the thing that you want to hate. Police pull me over, I LOL in their face. You know, uh, look that song up. Uh, his name's like Tom McDonald. Norm McDonald? Tom, yeah. Because there's a comedian named Norm. Um, rest in peace. Um, that That's where we're at, you know? He's got all kinds of woke-ass songs like that, too. Um, like, uh, man, my brain is fucking swimming. The point is, we're at warfare against every little thing. And if you don't stand up for your rights, even though you're going to go down, probably, I'm going to lose this house fighting my landlord, you know? But someone's got to. And it at least sets a precedent moving forward, like every legal court case. Every one that we actually win, no matter how many of us lose, and that includes my fellow friends that are black in the audience, okay? For every battle that you failed entering a court system or whatever, that don't mean quit trying. That don't mean that the system is so rigged that you'll never win. That means fight harder, speak more. If you get banned off of YouTube, go to BitChute. Sign up for 10 more YouTube accounts while you're at it. They can only slow you down. They can only stifle your voice and stop you and you shut the fuck up and you comply to that abuse and you sit down and kneel before this fucking overlord. Do you understand? We talked about uh, black power, right? How about actual fucking power? Fuck black or white. But let's focus on what power actually is, not going from I'm oppressed to not oppressed. Let's focus on the actual rules of power. Okay? There should be no oppression. You should have X, Y, and Z of rights, and if you don't have them, it shouldn't be advocated only because I'm black, so you can notice that uh, I'm going through a hard time. So are whites. And in disproportionate or not, you're drawing further divide and contrasting it to one half of the fence. You're going to create further war and tension. You're not going to fix the issue of ultimately saying every life in the world deserves this. The UK has free health care for everyone. Everyone. Okay? It's a smart thing, but you got to advocate it for it that way. If it came out like black people saying, oh, well, we're mistreated by white UK doctors and uh, whatever, we deserve health care, but what if you just 
first off, if it was true, let's just theorize that. If it was true that systemic racism and shit is, is that ingrained deep, do you think complaining that a black person isn't getting their dues is going to work? I thought the overlords were white by that understanding. So why would a white overlord grant a black subservient person in, I'm using what you guys are claiming, you know, why would they go out of their way to give you shit? You're wrong. You're wrong. They rule. You suck. They're the boss. You're the child. They're the doctor. You're the patient. They're the adult. You're the child. They're the teacher. You're the student, etc. and so on. And that's also just as true for white people, by the way. You should have been me growing up arguing with people where the teachers think they're right. And you're correcting their typos and fixing their boards and correcting their speech. That was me, buddy. It ain't just one way. Now, you might see it a lot. But I also think in the African community, it's because they allow the shit. They allow the shit. White people raise hell. We'll go to jail. People will bomb a building. You know, fucking, like, it's crazy, man. White people, it, just fun stereotypes to throw out there, but a black person is more statistically likely to rob you of your car stereo. A white person is more likely to be a serial killer. Not just a killer, a serial killer to go around and just for the joy of it, continuing to go around and murder after murder after murder. It's like some sick shit, right? Okay? So, uh... We got issues too, but one thing that we know for sure, and I think we're seeing it in, in uh, black lives a little bit too, wrong way to call it, wrong way to handle some of the things, but is that you're going to have to fucking get over the fact that it, you either have to fall in line within the rules of the systems that take place, which we can't even win at. We just win a little more because we at least study them, right? Fair enough to say. If I'm willing to study the contract and know the enemy's rules, even the Christian Bible tells you, well, it tells you two contradicting pieces of information. One says, don't let your other hand know what the other hand is doing. And the other one says, basically, know thy enemy. Know thy enemy is the proper one, though. Know thy enemy. This is their rules, so you know their laws. For example, did you know the first foot within someone's yard is still considered uh, public property? So uh, if you want to trespass on someone's yard and really push them to the end, step on their grass. <laughs> you know what I mean? Did you know that you can record from anywhere in public, in any direction, or inside of any public building, even if a privately owned facility is within that public building? Check out James Freeman uh, and stuff like that that regularly challenges our amendment rights and cop block and these kind of these kind of things that point out the hypocrisy. And these people are willing to go to jail. These are white people. These are people who are willing to go to jail to challenge the system that they don't like either. Or to affirm that what they do like within the system gets enforced, which doesn't always. And you still might be arrested, you still might be attacked, you still might have all these things happen. And in one of his videos' examples, he's recording inside of a government building. This government building has a bank inside. The bank inside is considered private. He's recording. The bank doors are open to the rest of the public building because their hours are open for business, which they explain multiple times to this guy. As the guy continues to explain, feel free, I already got permission from police and you can call them as well. Uh, I'm in the public. I'm allowed to do this. Yes, but you are recording in here. Yeah, from the public. Sorry, lady. I am in the public. I'm doing nothing wrong. You you can close your doors. You can walk away and you can close your doors. Guess who won? The guy with the camera. These are the few rights we still have if we keep fighting for it. The government gets to record you, right? There's a lot of fine lines, and you have to fight your ass off. It isn't just a black thing, you know? There are plenty of oppressed white people, but you have to fight your ass off. I have to fight for fucking everything. Having mentally ill, you know? Like, people will take advantage of it. They'll rob you blind, they'll steal from you, they'll get rid of every right that you have. And in the end, they don't need so much as to say, well, he's technically diagnosed at six years old with bipolar, type 2. So uh, he must be having a bipolar attack with the mere fact that he called the police on us or something. Like like if you rung out a baseball bat and started swinging at me, provided that you get rid of the bat before the police get here, I don't know. I mean, he was just having a bipolar attack. My mom did the same kind of thing growing up. She was horribly physically, verbally, etc. abusive. And I'll never forget one incident where uh, she backed herself. Like I am standing in the center, the fucking center of a front room on Thalega in Virginia Beach. And... She backs herself up, narrating out loud. Gotta love psychotic people. Oh my God, Kevin. Oh my God, no, Kevin, no! And she backs herself in the corner, building herself into a false panic. Nobody's talking to her. No one's threatening her in any way. She's basically just screamed at the top of her lungs. She threatened me with physical violence. And one thing I did differently that day that I hadn't done in 17 years, and it was tell her, go ahead and hit me. Instead of worrying about it this time, right? Go ahead and do your violence. Go ahead, whatever. I said, 
go ahead and hit me. And I had this calm tone. I stood up right. I said, go ahead and hit me. I'm not afraid of you anymore. And that exact moment, <gasps> oh my God, because normally that's the tactic automatically guaranteed to work, right? I'll just beat you within an inch of your life. Use weapons. I'll cut you with, with weapons. And we can just say that you did that running through a thorn bush. People are evil, okay? And all it took was spread. She waited. Police get there, right? She backed herself in the corner. Oh my God, Kevin, stop it. You're hurting me. You're hurting me. No. Not one more corner. Nobody walked into the corner with her. I'm fucking shocked because I'm watching this play out in real life. I get to see what she's about to do before it even happens. I get to watch a professional actress. My mom is a classic narcissist. Police get there. She hasn't cried or nothing. On command. Starts to cry. Now that they're here, all of a sudden... And she's not even crying. It's just the noises of crying. Not a single droplet of water leave the eyes. Not a single change in pupil dilation or color. And she says, I don't know what happened. This, this isn't my boy. This isn't my son. He is bipolar. He must be having a bipolar attack. <laughs> All right, well, ma'am, ma'am, ma'am. Well, calm down, ma'am. It's okay, ma'am. Ma'am, we're going to get him some help, okay? We're going to take him. We're going to take him down. We're going to get him down to Virginia Beach site and get him evaluated. <laughs> Okay, okay. That's all it takes most of the time for people to be able to extort us. Mentally ill, right? Or even make us out to be criminals. The mentally ill is the lucky half of the thing because sometimes you'll still get the criminal charges and all it takes is people acting like a-holes and making some accusations. So we need more than ever, folks. If you're out there and you got bipolar, ADHD, PTSD, obsessive compulsive disorder, borderline personality disorder, schizophrenia, uh, any real disorder that means life is a little bit challenging for you, you need to start recording the confrontations you have. You don't need to go as far as I do, encouraging and coercing and keeping people pissed off. But there's a reason why I do it. I need a lot of material. We need to make sure that other people see these people are outrageous and irate. These people extort, manipulate, rob, physically abuse, sexually harass. Everything that a person can do to a person happens to the elderly and the mentally ill as well. And it's important that we start advocating for ourselves. Not everybody is as autistic. You know, we don't have the language. I got lucky having this illness in a way. It makes a great disconnect for a lot of social situations, but it means that I'm pretty good at advocating for myself. I have a pretty excellent memory. I'm pretty obsessive to details, which makes me really good at this kind of shit. But I think we all need to start recording more. We need to, when uh, somebody starts screaming at us, whip out your phone. If you can, don't make it obvious. If you have to make it obvious or you got a big ego, go ahead and include it. But ultimately, you're going to want to catch them out of control while you're calm. One of the greatest gaslighting techniques my mom used to do that I've learned to use against her now, and it totally works, is to remain calm while they remain outrageous and to say, you're out of control. Adults don't like hearing that they're out of control. Listen to how you're talking. Do you hear how calm I'm talking to you? You're screaming. You're swearing. I, I, I don't know. What do, what do I do here? Ma'am, people hate that shit. And they can't very easily continue the fueled argument. One, you're right. They have to admit it, even if not out loud. They can't argue with that. You're right. They are out of control. You're not. And whatever they're doing to try to get you to excel with them is not working. So they have to look at themselves or just continue the tirade and look entirely past what you said and just keep going. Depending on their level of psychosis, they'll readjust their tactics because it's about manipulating you. Or, since they're actually the one off the deep end, they'll just continue down their tangent. Your job, out there, listener, is to record, to make notes, to take pictures every time that you can, to keep a hidden camera if you can manage that. Maybe get one of those ones I got for 20 bucks off of eBay. Might not be extremely great quality, but it does what it needs to do, and its battery life is efficient. Color's a little off. It's only 720p. But hey takes a SD card, it's rechargeable, you can even plug it into a TV for playback. That's pretty fucking amazing. And all with a little clip that can make it look like a fucking pen. Or you can even have a little flip cover for the camera so it just looks like a fucking tab that hulks on your pocket. Why not? It's gotten me out of quite a predicament. Quite a few times. It's our job. There's a video I just uploaded uh, over a year ago where I was at a hotel and this Muslim guy snatched my phone. The dumbass continued to let it keep recording. I was already recording him screaming at me. Someone said, call the cops. I said, go ahead. I plan on sticking around. <laughs> the guy continued to hold my phone, threatened me while my phone is still in his hand. And tell me that after stealing the property right out my hands, he'll give it to me after I leave. That's not how the law works, sir. 
By the end of that particular day, he ran away before the police that were called on me got there. With all of his belongings in a tackle box. It was like some sad homeless shit. He's got like a shirt in there and the whole bit like stuffed into a, a fucking tackle box. And goes to leave. I got his information from his own family that run the business. <laughs> I didn't press charges. I just put his whole fucking name online. And his ID number. But whatever. You know. Um, the point is, if I weren't willing to record him, nothing would happen at all to anybody ever. People would constantly, in, that, in this case, foreigners would come here, try to take advantage of shit, build businesses, and clearly he ran away because he, he, one of his family members might have been legal, but he was illegal. And his uh, green card or temporary license or whatever, the little initials let us know that with the ID number. That this is temporary, that he's not an established full fucking citizen, whatever. Um, but, you know, the point is, these people will get away with it if we don't start holding them accountable. They can take our jobs or whatever, and I'm not really on that whole argument, but it's fun to say. You know, a lot of people get irritated for no reason. Um, because really they're just taking advantage of something that our own Americans aren't taking advantage of. How to be persistent. Talk to managers, show up like clockwork, and use their money in a way that will earn more money instead of drugs, violence, and alcohol. Or upgrading their rims. Or their teeth with diamonds and gold. And, and again, I know some of these things are stereotypical, but I'm pointing things out for a reason. If we can think through our actions, our cause and effect relationships, we can all have a better time with all colors and all peoples and all nations and all countries if we can just think through cause and effect instead of just trying to manipulate and have the upper hand all the time. If you'll notice, I've been here for over a year in this house. I haven't pressed charges and caused any unnecessary problems yet. I've waited for them to. I'm just going to take advantage of the systems in place once we get there. I have not gone out of my way to hurt anybody's wives or cast a judgment, no matter what their skin color, no matter what their differences, their mental disabilities, nothing. I haven't just automatically called police and tried to have the upper hand, nothing. But we're going to need to ultimately document everything that we can. Mentally ill are being abused. Learning disabled is being abused. Autistic kids are being abused, man. And because they obsess and you're only interested in certain fucking topics, you get to just treat them like retards and walk all over them. You know, learning disabled people don't have the voice it takes to be able to speak for themselves. The very first conversation my roommate has with every single person he meets, cop, lawyer, case manager, landlord, me, I'm learning disabled. This is the very first thing out of his mouth. As if, like me telling people I have autism, to alleviate some of the pressure to know, look, I communicate a little differently, things might be a little harder for me, bear with me. Other people aren't really bearing with me. They're like, oh, okay, bingo, jackpot, there's something I can exploit. There's the, the thumb screw to get at. Oh, boy, he's learning disabled. He won't even know I'm fucking him over and robbing him blind. The guy hasn't even been here for a month. Do you think my landlord collected his rent money? Of course he fucking did. He took the guy's money, shut the fucking hot water off, right? Continued to make bank off of us. And the guy went over to his family member's house to stay for a while. And meanwhile, his bills still cost the same here. He's not even willing to be here anymore until some of these things can be solved. And he has no way of knowing the hot water just got turned back on. Would that stop the landlord from extorting him? No. Would that stop Cam G? In the Cam G housing, we're all mentally ill. So who's more important? Are my rights as valid as the roommate's rights? I would think so. Your speculation is what's going to kick me out? What do you mean if? Because it happened anyway. A little over a week. There was no if. You gave me a fucking fake warning and then tried to fucking do whatever you wanted anyway and make it seem like it was like the sequential average way of handling things. But you'll notice there's no evidence in between the two things. There's a reason for that. But if we look at just the dates, we do know that they were at least in order. We warned him first and then kicked him out. So as long as he's not a smart person with autism and OCD, you know, uh, if he's schizophrenic, we can take advantage of him. If he's learning disabled, we can take advantage of him. If he's autistic and OCD, he might have actually kept some details and some records and stuff and be able to question us questioning him, challenge us challenging him. That wouldn't be any good for anybody. I hope this was this at least entertaining for you folks. My name is Kevin Chaos. I, I feel like my job, I'm the devil, right? I'm the white devil. I embraced that shit first with rap, and that was a really great positive response. Everybody loved all of my dark tracks and humorous things playing off of the adopted identity that the world wishes to give us. It's funny, really, it is. 
mankind, since its dawn, you know, since they conceived the very idea of a devil, this invisible force that makes them do bad things, or not even makes them, because you're even still told free will, but constantly encourages lewd behavior, right? <laughs> Allegedly. You know, it's interesting to me that mankind is always pointed, even though three fingers at least, depending how you hold your hand, point back at you. At something else. God did this for me. I didn't earn a goddamn thing. The devil did it. Anything good happens, some one one guy's to blame. Anything bad happens, one other guy's to blame. Not me ever, so let's all be schizophrenics together. That's just wild to me. Since the dawn of time, people have said the devil made me do it. I wasn't responsible for screaming. Someone said a bad word to me. They used a racial slur. They called me retard, and I just acted retarded because of it. Okay. Somebody called me a fool, and I said, Who are you calling fool? And got foolish right away. Okay. But as long as we can blame him, you know. Now, well, okay, let's say he's wrong. You shouldn't say retarded. It's not nice to say retarded. And maybe not, even though technically it's completely accurate, and I will use that word till I die, stemming from the word retard, R-I-T-A-R-D, which means to slow down in tempo, which means essentially you are operating in a slower than average pace. You are retarded. But whatever. Let's say that's too offensive. I shouldn't say that. I should know the, the reaction I'm going to get or something. Okay, I'm wrong for words. Everything you do, though, if I'm responsible for my language, aren't you responsible for whatever happens next? If you're smarter and better than me, especially if whoever I upset in the world is not mentally ill, shouldn't you not exhibit mental illness and outrage then? If the first person is bipolar, who are you to have the mood disorder in the moment? That's weird. If the first person is swearing and you get offended and let yourself get so irate that you swear and or insult back, how the fuck is that guy wrong? You just showed us that it's perfectly fine for a sober-minded individual, allegedly anyway, with no mental illnesses, to act like a fool, to use swear words, to be irate, or do whatever it is that's wrong for him to do. So why is it, if he does it first, it's perfectly okay for you to do? And people do this with crime, too. They wait for an excuse to get into physical assaulting confrontations. They're like, oh, I'm not going to hit them. I'm not going to be the first one. And they'll talk. They like ego, try to trip you into to speaking yourself into a vicious beating. Which could go one in fucking a couple of ways. Um, either not work entirely, the most likely scenarios, at least with me. Or you get the beating without laying the first punch because you talking nasty is a little bit better at them talking nasty. While they thought they'd drill you into a hole and get you to lose your emotional cool, it turns out you know people's buttons, people's minds, mannerisms, body, behavior, fucking dress code. You know, maybe you pay attention more and they get to overreact. Maybe they called you a white devil or a cracker. I'll give you an example. They call you a cracker, and you say, I never understood how that's an insult. I mean, I, not that I approve of racism, but wasn't the cracker the one whipping the shit out of someone else? That doesn't sound like that's the person in pain. Wasn't the cracker the slave driver or sometimes the fellow slave whooping their own brothers and sisters' asses with the whip, making a cracking noise, a.k.a. cracker? And you're pretty sure, almost guaranteed, to get more verbal confrontation back, but very, very likely physical confrontation. The second, or, or the third technically, of the scenarios that might occur in these, obviously, is they're hoping that you actually lose the emotional cool first. That you talk into such a way that uh, they, t they talk and you go back and forth, but that they have the upper hand and you make the first swing. At which case, most people believe that they're allowed to legally kill you or harm you after that. But there's a fine line to walk there, too. Depends how much force you, you apply. Like, me carrying around knives work great as a deterrent, but if you attack me unarmed, it depends how I attack you or use the knife. It is excessive force. It could be considered assault with a deadly weapon, even if you came in with a fucking complete ski mask on trying to rob me. Depending on how I use that blade, it is assault with a deadly weapon and it's excessive force. This isn't a taser. This isn't an offensive weapon, although I do have shit like that. Like, I'll show you an offensive knife. This is an offensive knife. Or, or a defensive knife. This is a defensive knife. Okay? The blade is curved. You cannot stab with this. It goes around my hands. You can only do slashing motions, which means cuts, not real wounds. You can't harm any organs with this. And unless you hit very specific fucking places, you're not going to be able to kill anybody with this. You're only going to make them feel pain and want to fucking stop, hopefully, for you. So defensive isn't always the best way to go. But as you can see here, this is from Buckshot. Okay, with a little picture of a bear. Buckshot knives. 
Actually, let's get rid of this static here for a little bit. So I can actually show off here. Woo! Yeah, I had uh, two different systems going on to make that. Oh, well. Let's keep it like that. We have buckshot knives here. Okay. Ah, uh, man, that quality looks like shit. There we go. Buckshot. Okay. And now this is this is sweet, too. It's got its own little axe. I called it my axe fist. Pretty cool, right? Of course, uh... This just makes you look badass if the world doesn't have any weapons, pretty much. Someone can still shoot you from distance. Or from up close. Which, looking at the skills of some of these gangsters is the only way they can get it done. These people don't go to a fucking range. Their weapons are legally owned half the time. How much practice do they get? Shoot. No, not really. In the grand scheme of things, I don't really contribute. You ain't afraid of you losing your life, bro? Not really, in the grand scheme of things, I don't contribute. And that actually, believe it or not, diffuses a lot of situations. So that's that's defensive. That wouldn't be superior force where I attacked him, where I'd use that or my taser to my advantage. However, where I'd use something like this, whatever, normally I catch it, but I was trying to look at the camera. Okay, this is a fish fucking filleting, ooh. That outline or whatever this happened? Oh, with the reflection of that static? That's some sexy shit. I wish I could have an animated pattern of a blade now. The future will have some LCDs maybe. <laughs> In the middle of our knives for a screen. Half knife, half flats. Didn't know. Anyway, you could saw up in a motherfucker. If this makes it in, just pulling it out, you're going to be doing some damage. You got your a little flash hook right there. You got yourself a little tooth saw over there. And you have an extremely, extremely thin and also extra sharpened by me blade. This blade is by Tsunami. I got it from Walmart for three bucks, tax included. In the fishing section, it was the only one left of its kind. I thought for a couple reasons. One, a knife for three bucks? Buying that automatically. Two, we all know about concealed weapons charges. Look at this. This shit isn't concealed as long as I have it somewhere sticking out the front of my fucking pants or at the side or at an angle from a pocket or inside of a jacket or however you decide to carry it. I even made my own holster for it for my legs or for my arms, depending what I'm wearing on what given day. But uh, you can spot this from a fucking block away. In fact, gangsters have pointed it out. Oh, I saw the knife already. I'm glad you saw what I deliberately put there for you to see. If I didn't want you to see it, do you think it would be there? No. Bad boy. Tonk. <laughs> you know? Fuck. Like, uh, someone wants to kick my ass, and they're like, Oh, i already seen that you got a taser and a knife. Do you think... That if that was my main force of attack, if that was really there for much more than the deterrent, that you'd see it coming. You're also discounting the very obvious part that you can only see one part of my body at a time. So, what you see might not be all that exists. There might be legally concealed under three inch blades elsewhere. Not to mention other tools. Like... I commonly carry the taser, whether you see it or not. I commonly carry lock picks. I commonly carry at least three knives on me at all times. And I don't care what government facility or security guard decides to give me some shit. Checking in. I'll charge them, too. Check them, too. And I did. In fact, most recently, going into a CSB out here in Fort Smith, um, they, for, they tried to keep my keys. I don't know where I laid them right now. I'd show you, but it's on a little keychain where they fold out like a pocket knife, right? So, uh, they wanted to act like it was a knife, basically. Now, they've tried this a couple times before, but once, once I showed them it, they didn't give me shit anymore. This time, some different guard. We're gonna have to keep that. I explained it, showed them this was keys, unfolded it. She tried to do that unlawful shit that security guards and cops like to do, where they come up with shit out of nowhere that isn't on some sign somewhere, isn't part of the facility's rules, isn't part of the laws, there's no stipulation here, and for the record, law versus uh, policy are totally different. By all means, break every policy in the fucking world. I'll walk right past this bitch and leave you sitting there. And if you try to attack me, apparently I got weapons. Or tools. As we prefer to say, because these are tools. This is mu nothing much more than a visual deterrent. Okay? It could be used for whatever. But ultimately, this is a tool until used as a weapon. The invention of the knife... Well, actually, I don't know the answer on that one for sure. It might not have been to originally used as a tool. But commonly, today it is. Nowadays, weapons are shit like assault rifles. You know, that people use real weapons. 
a fucking little knife that isn't even a switchblade, which we just changed the law on anyway, you know? Ballistics are, uh, are legal again, you know? But, uh, I can't help it if people are crazy and I decide to be just as crazy as them and advocate the few rights that I fucking have, you know what I'm saying? God. Excuse me. So, the point is, stand up for yourself. Record every interaction that you can. If you have to do it with a hidden camera, which you often will in certain circumstances, unless you're willing to just lose your life like me. My life don't mean shit. My life means exactly what I'm using it for, which is educating people, helping as many people as I can, healing as many people as I can, teaching magic, intelligence, discipline, meditation, martial arts, anything that can help a person ultimately be disciplined and win at life. With other people, without other people. Here's your fr friendly neighborhood ballistics knives. Or whatever, which also are legal to carry again now. Which means, unless as long as it's three inches or under or whatever, you can conceal these as well. But it used to be, you could still carry these, but they had to be in plain sight. And there's all kinds of fun lines on ballistic, which essentially means thrown or projectile. Um, it's actually not that hard to fucking use these. Um, point, so I'm showing off that I have all these alleged weapons, and one of the reasons why I'm doing that is because my lease says you can't have any weapons, but I haven't shown you a weapon yet. Nope. I've shown you, um, I mean, the only thing you can kind of call a weapon is the taser. And really, is it? That's a self-defense apparatus. I mean, let's split hair, it's fine. Yeah, that one I'll give you, maybe. But a razor blade? Well, if I'm a construction worker, definitely a tool. And, uh, I mean, you could do some damage with this, but... I mean, it would take a lot of time going at different angles, going for the right places, or hoping to aim the exact right spots the first time. A knife? Well, if you want to bitch about these, you're going to have to forbid us from making sandwiches and from cutting ham and shit, because that means the ones in the kitchen are just as effective. <coughs> Sometimes more sharp. Yeah. Anyway, this has been the chaos I've been up to. I have a third folder downstairs, but I've got like so much shit that... Ooh, that's sexy as hell. Got so much shit to keep track of. <laughs> Guess what color this is. Of course it is. This gives me an idea, actually. If I get rid of everything else in the background and use this, I can hold up a sign that only exists through the camera. Be like, welcome to KTV. You know, hold up this... And it don't even exist, but only while this passes the screen. I thought about all kinds... I never thought about doing it with a folder until right now, but I thought about all kinds of cre clever shit I could do with an actual green screen. This is a green screen. You know, like, people wonder how they did the invisibility cloak. And Now, I have my computer set to run something over it, but this is essentially how they did it. They filmed the location without the guy there. And then they fucking filmed him in front of green screen and wearing green screen so that he could just my body's gone you know if I can... <laughs> some english guys can be pissed at me for doing it in an accent and failing uh, so yeah life is fucking hell but i if there's one thing good that comes from all of this it's advocating for mental health rights it's i mean i'm gonna lose this house over my head because even if even if i don't get kicked out of here um i'm gonna get a 30 day notice no doubt um, and even if I did, this place would be condemned because the mere fact that I've challenged the man means he's going to have to fix all of this stuff. And we're at that point where something has to happen. So, uh, when the ceiling in the bathroom caved in, I, I mean, I got two steps away from the fucking toilet. <whistles> Praise Satan. Thank God I'm alive. I'm two steps away. I mean, the thing was already cracked. I knew it was only a matter of time, but I didn't know that much time. <laughs> Now we got all the asbestos and foamy shit all over the fucking floor and more falling out and spiders and shit. Ugh. I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's just crazy. Like, there, there's so much work to be done in this house. And I'm going around cleaning up shit I don't even have to do. I'm going to make sure it's exquisite, the parts that I'm in control of. And take pictures before and after, naturally. And I've had taken pictures every month for the past seven months. And even if I didn't, just seven months ago, how much of it's the same? Exposed wiring, lack of hot water, heating and cooling, uh, fucking holes in the wall and the floor. 
it goes on and on. Uh, wires and plugs hanging out the bathroom walls. So, I mean, just imagine, if you will. Let's say I just got the 30-day notice, because that's just speculation, but um, who knows what's on that Porsche bag. I'm not going to fuck with it. It ain't my responsibility to open other people's mail. But, um, I mean, it's definitely not addressed to me. There's no name on the outside of this bag. I'm not touching shit that don't belong to me. I tell people all the time, if it doesn't belong to you, don't fucking touch it. Because the very next thing I'm going to do is call you a fucking safe. So, not that it necessarily applies the same way here, but it kind of does. I don't know whose fucking papers I might be stealing if I move that bag. That goes to my advantage. Why wouldn't I do that? I, I can only guess. And quite educated, but I can only guess. And I have no obligation to go find out what's in that bag. I think I derailed myself here. Anyway, um, I'm advocating for mental health. I have to. I'm going to get my rights. I'm at least going to get some of my money back over this place. The guy's not going to rent this out to me. Oh, that's where I was. Condemning. This place would definitely be condemned because there's no way for him to catch up to everything that needs to be done. There's no way he can repair all the holes in the floors and the walls and the shed in time. There's no way in hell he can undo what's already happened and been well documented. The guy's going to give me a fucking small fortune. Buying five new vehicles, showing up high as a kite if he'd show up at all, popping by unannounced at that. Um, I'm pretty sure all your money is spent into other stupid things. You're a drug addict and a loser, a retiring Navy guy who can paint one third of a door in seven months. Uh, longer than that, really. It's been a year and a half. Seven months or other repairs that I've complained about. But So in a year and a half, you painted a third of a door. I wonder why you're retiring. It's not that hard to figure out, sir. Should I say son, since everybody wants to be racist? And I imagine that's supposed to be racist somehow. Well, it could mean I'm taking care of you, and I see you as my boy, someone worthy and intelligent. But whatever. Might as well stir the pot. Might as fucking well. I'm about to get crazy, y'all. Y'all ready? Go back into my ridiculous self. And, you know, Bugs Bunny taught us if you can't beat him, join him. I might as well be the guy they say that. Oh, I'm bipolar. Let me flip out. Okay. Cool. I'm ill. I'm crazy. Let me be crazy. Oh, you're fearful for your life? <laughs> ah, not yet. Not yet. I've just begun. This is the very, very fucking tip of the iceberg. The very tip. You have no fucking idea. And it's true. Well, maybe a little of an idea. Tell me this, friends. My better folder, my folder on Carl is downstairs, unfortunately. God, I love that. It's so cool. <laughs> Um, why, when Carl gave me the 30-day notice, the last one, 2130, I guess I should say, if I'm being politically accurate, wouldn't want this video to be used against me now. <laughs> um, tell me why, when Carl fucked up and fucked up some more and then fucked up on top of fucking up just before fucking up some more. When he wanted to give me a 2130, a.k.a. to hide and cover all of his tracks after the violent roommate, we, we I think we discussed that a little bit. No, actually, we did not. Um, but anyway, I've received two 2130s. The guy told me, the landlord said, I have to remember that my roommate's black. You gotta remember where he came from, how he grew up, which basically means being a violent person to make it in a white man's world. But it's not a white man's world, by the way. I cringed at that my whole fucking life. You know, brothers and sisters of all colors instead of fighting for their rights, fighting for their colors. Fighting for feeling some form of oppression that somehow overrides all other logic. And instead of where it actually works, it's over everything. We're just, we're, we're always like this. There's jokes on this in C-Lab 2021, and it's hilarious. It's a very bad joke. Uh, I wish I could splice it in here, but since this is live, it's a little bit more difficult. Actually, I probably could, but I don't know if the audio would come out all right. Let's see what we can do here. Because um, I know I I, uh, I ripped it recently. Because um, I started collecting a lot of racial material so I could talk about some of the stuff. And maybe with a humorous approach, people will allow it more. Otherwise, it's straight to bit shoot. Though so far, I guess I'm doing politically accurate enough to be able to allow them to talk, let me talk about, which is shocking, I know. I'm the first guy to get in trouble on a censorship. Um... But I definitely say it's my opinion. I'm no doctor the whole nine yards. It hasn't stopped me when I talked about COVID. Um, they said I was spreading misinformation or some shit like that. Obviously, I was not. I mean, the thing was a fucking comedy, and it talked about other conspiracy people and their crazy beliefs and made sure to let you know that they were crazy. 
um, but that we don't know because we're not doctors, so we can't tell you what's real. And that was enough. Now, I'm saying as little as possible right now because just mentioning it might be enough to get the wrong kind of censors angry because it's not going like entirely with the NIH or whatever. Um, do, 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 do. Boing. Let's see here. Pa pow Hey, now you can see some of my shit. I have thousands of reaction clips I've recorded and even where they're from. So we're going to look at... It probably starts with R for racism. Race war. Ah, here we go. All right. Alright, we're gonna rewind it. Alright, and I'm gonna mute my audio here so that I know it comes through. Well, it's pretty obvious that you did it. Quinn. To me it is. Come on, just fess up. Girl, what are you talking about? It's obvious that you did it. Oh, okay, I get it. So the black guy did it, huh? Automatically blaming the black guy, huh? Nice. Well, a minute ago, you were all ready to blame the Latino. No, I wasn't. You want to play the race card, Quinn? Is that it? What, so Latinos steal? We're just a bunch of thieves, gringo? I never said that. You don't have to say it. <laughs> I can smell it on you. You disgusting bigot. Would you shut up? I can't believe I had sex with you a jillion times. What? <laughs> you told me you were saving yourself for marriage. <laughs> <laughs> No, 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 no. That was crazy, yeah? I have a couple more clips, so we'll do some just so we have some fun here. I can imagine everybody's interested in just these long-ass talks. I mean, some of you are. Some of you really take an interest in my life and some of the things I'm trying to do. But I also am aware it's pretty much listening to someone constantly go through challenges. And every now and then we get to prove some of the justices we have accomplished, but... <laughs> here we go. Here's where we are now. Oh shit! Here, here we, we go. go. It's a hoax. Race war. Race war. Race war. Race war's on, everybody. It's going down. Shit is going down. Black supremacy these days, or so it seems. You know, it's just like. Between the mental health crisis in America, we have two major fucking crises going on. Well, three if you count COVID. We have uh, our health crisis with the fact that people are hypothetically, or the big scare even, even our news networks are talking about it, so I guess I'm allowed to vaguely say it, is the big scare is now we might be bioengineering weapons. Okay? The G-Virus, y'all. Resident Evil, y'all. Resident fucking evil, we may get the T-virus and the G-virus, the tyrant infecting other people, sneezing and vomiting on you. <laughs> um, it's, uh, th that's the main crisis we got. We got the COVID thing and the fact that we can't trust or know what's going on with all our superiors and contradictory information, so we can never know the full story. So that's obviously a huge crisis. We have mental health crisis in America, which is only growing exponentially, especially with all the new groups and identities and shit that gets formed that is very strongly wanting to believe, in some cases, everything contrary to science. And that also gets covered in number three as a belief as well, which is the, the racial problem in the world. Is we got a lot of racism and encouraging ideologies of both sides, of superior and inferior beings due to their skin colors and shit like that. And obviously the point from the last one supports this. Let's see, uh, hey, hey, this is funny too. I'll just share with you all a couple of these racist clips I've, I've recorded because here's the thing. Now, some of you might say that this is proof of systemic racism and quite the opposite. Some of the more modern cartoons are actually pointing out the craziness of it all. It's satire. Um, and this is an especially good example. This is from um, Paradise PD. You like that memory trick? I'm literally reading files. And Paradise PD, Police Brutality. Okay, Gerald. 
You can do this. Just make sure I don't overreact. <laughs> Drop the knife or I'll blow your head off, bitch! Oh, stay cool, Fitz. Just a little white boy cut up spaghetti. Oh, shit! It's Darth Vader with a flamethrower! Forget this mess. I'm out of here! Who's there? Oh, shit. Drop the gun, motherfucker! No, not my dick! <laughs> Part two. Gina, if it's that important to ya, I'll try to carry a gun. Fine, but do you remember the Paradise PD police gun safety motto? We ain't got no gun safety motto. Correct. <laughs> ah, <f> <laughs> So, yeah, you know, I try to make these things not boring, telling you stories and going through different clips and things. And in the future, we'll revive the show and it'll be extremely structured. But obviously, I'm going through way too much to give you guys a regular schedule. So I try to do it whenever I get the chance. If you just so happen to catch it, sweet. If you watch it later, sweet. If you're an interested, fucking sweet. It really doesn't matter. But I'm working on real life shit. I'm trying to barely keep a roof over my head, and I'm tackling a lot of people to be able to get some of the material I share with you guys. I'm putting myself in literally uh, life danger all the fucking time to risk people drawing razor blades and guns. And fucking, uh, if only I recorded some recent events, but it would have never came out at the hour of the night and with the camera that I have. But if you would have seen what, I mean, fucking 300 black people across the street throwing some party. People doing U-turns in the street with both doors to their car open. Chicks at 32 plus cars. Yes, I counted. I wrote down the license plates as well. Um, of half-naked chicks and people in the church parking lot because they ran out of space and filling up their yard and the house that's abandoned next to them. Uh, doing lines of cocaine in front of fucking cameras in the church. I'm, I mean, absolute fucking chaos. Now you got to imagine I'm a white guy wearing a fucking swastika on my shoulder. It's not a swastika. It's a fill fight. Okay, which is a protective symbol. Surprise, one of the dudes actually knew what that was. So you get people yelling out white devil and stirring problems in addition to their already loud, obnoxious, drunk, violent, and every other thing that they're doing out there. And again, that's not just because they're black people. Maybe it's purely coincidence. Um, in fact, the majority of the population out here is African American, so who knows. But um, so I'm not trying to say that it's purely a stereotype to them, but all the stereotypes of white people are being used as a weapon. White devil, racist, all kinds of shit. Why? Because I fucking walked by with a camera and recorded the fact that from midnight to fucking three in the morning, you're still at this shit? Okay, I'm the racist. You're the one yelling out racial slurs and shit. I'm the racist. Even recently, I had a guy walk halfway across the street from directly across the street with a gun. I convinced him to turn back around and go inside. Wish I could share with you the whole bit, you know? I just kept, climbed out of the fucking window, set up my rooftop and everything. The guy said, come down and fight him and shit or whatever. And it already showed me the gun. One, I'm not retarded. Two... I'd rather just piss you off now that you've pissed me off and I've reversed the tables, but okay. Uh, you know, it's just interesting to me. So, it got to a point where, I mean, I told him the same thing I told a dude in jail. Okay, I'll give you the short jail story instead. I woke up, nobody else did. That's really weird odds, but nobody else woke up. The locks popping and everything, you know, normally that's enough to wake you up and shit. You don't get a good sleep cycle um, between the bright lights in your face and everything else designed to, to make jail a not good thing for you, at least with Virginia Beach Community Corrections, anyway. You know, it's designed to rarely even let you get deep enough sleep to go into REM, rapid eye movement, to have dreams and therefore recover anything. Um, all by design. Everything's occult, systematic design. You have seven uh, major chakras, seven stars on the hidden on the inside of seven snaps on your jail jumpsuit. You have the Star of David position screws. Wouldn't you, if you hung up a mirror, put screws starting in the corners? There are no screws in the corners so that they can just make this shape. Everything's equal and opposite in the Temple of God. So shall also the pods and the other side be the exact same mirrored image of itself. I mean, this place even played the... Yo, so you remember who Black Sabbath song Black Sabbath, who changed their band name from Earth to Black Sabbath after the success of this song called Black Sabbath has three notes in it. What a lot of you don't know is it was called the Tritome. They found it in the ancient occult manuscript. Ooh. 
And in ancient times, the tritone was believed to be the three notes that factually summoned the beast. So every announcement, why that unique pattern is shit? That's very interesting. Even if they don't believe it would happen, someone had knowledge of that to program it in that way. Anyway, so uh, to be on point, I just wanted y'all to know that there's some serious shit there too. Head vampire of the jail is called Kent Stoley. Um, so, uh, it's getting hot and I'm getting tired. Um, so the pod, the pod locks, lock, unlocked and everything. I'm the only one that ends up, uh, I clean the whole pod because if not, we all get locked down. So I do all the work myself. Unprecedented, you know. Um, clean it all up. I have a deck of cards that I traded for that's old and tattered and whatnot. <sighs> I sat down at a table and played cards with myself. Nothing wrong with that, right? Maybe there is. Because I'm not black. And I don't gamble. Here we are again. So from this very same kind of stereotypical superior, in some cases, not all black people, but you got some black supremacists. They guard the phones. They skip in line. God damn, if you do, you'll get your ass handed to you, you know. Um, just jump right in front of you in line. And what are you going to do? No, please don't do that. And you're going to find yourself in a physical confrontation. <laughs> Not that I would ever really say it like that, of course. But I'm obviously joking stereotypes of white people and saying that. Anyway. So I cleaned the whole pot. I sat down at the, one of the fucking tables. And I played cards for myself. People got up and they immediately came over with their foot in their mouth, as I say. Instead of their best foot forward. As I often also follow up with. You need to move. Ha! <laughs> You need to move. Okay. This is the gambling table. There are three other tables. There's obviously index cards, but you get the idea. <coughs> there are three other tables. This is the gambling table. That's me looking under it and over it for name tags or for any kind of sign or signal or hint whatsoever that I'm just supposed to fucking bow down and kiss your ass and that this is the factual gaming table. There's one chair to this entire table. Every other table has four. It's clearly inefficient for the gambling table. But people like to stand up and scream and slap decks down so hard on the fucking table that they crack them in half. Gambling's illegal also. Not just in the real law, but a specific rule of the jail. I'm not going to help you, dude. Get the fuck out of my face. I didn't say that either. What I actually said instead was, uh, that's not the way to talk to someone to get what you want. Five or six different people approached me and tried to do it aggressively. Didn't work. One guy, kind of friendly, young guy, about 18-year-old black dude, came up to me and said, uh, trying to help you, bro. Bro. That's the way to suck up to the white man, bro and boss, which I never understood. I once stopped a guy right in the middle of a job interview for calling me boss, and I said, I don't fucking appreciate that, sir. Don't appreciate what? You calling me boss man. That's fucked up. Why the fuck would you do that? I mean it, bro. I stopped in the middle of an interview one time and said, just shocked, like, what the fuck? You know, because people think they can just butter people up, that if they act like they're the slave and I'm the master because I look like a fucking white person, that's supposed to mean something. That kind of pissed me off. Because not only are you, are you fucking undermining who I am with that type of behavior and pushing me into a categorical box that I'm not, but you're also pushing yourself into a categorical box that you're not, that you're a worthless fucking slave. And obviously, that's not the case. We did away with uh, slavery, and now it's like uh, technological slavery. Right now we use Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and other little clever things to trick people into thinking certain things are and are not important. And algorithms to keep them addicted and dopamine spikes to keep them quite literally engaged. But anyway, to fast forward. So everybody asked me wrong, that wrong, that kid's like, I'm trying to help you out, you know, uh, and he meant well, but I told him, I said, look, man, you came to me the right way. If any of them had came and talked to me and asked me nicely, I would have moved. I'm asking you nicely. I said, you're not the person that's the problem. So a guy, he said, if we can't gamble here, you ain't gambling. You ain't playing games either. I said, again, calm as fuck. Exactly I'm talking to you now. Okay. I'll sit here just to spite you then. And I did. Eventually someone else would come up and try to challenge me to a fight. But notice those weird ass words. To challenge. 
me. Okay. It's like, uh, step off, uh, you, why don't you step off camera, bro? What do you mean, why don't I? Because I'm busy, motherfucker. I didn't say motherfucker. What do you mean, why don't I? Step over here. Okay, so, you know what I said back to him? <laughs> Hold up. Let me get this straight. You need my help to beat my ass for you? Get the fuck out of here. Why the hell would I do that? If you're really so upset, if you're really so butthurt that you want to harm me, you'll do it. You don't need my help. Are you telling me that you're so afraid to break the law? <laughs> Which you're willing to gamble on camera, mind you. Didn't say that part. Gambling on camera. But you, you, you need my help to assault me. You want my help to encourage your anger and your violence while I clean the pod. And the only reason why you're not locked in your bedroom right now is because of me and my kindness. You want me to willingly walk off camera to help you attack me. Go away. <laughs> I did a similar thing to the neighbors with the gun. You know, they're talking shit from an entire other half of the street, right? They're across the street. And at one point it became violent and threats and asking me to come down for a fight. And I said, what the? I said, dude, you got a fucking gun? Just shoot me from there. Or do you not go through marksman training as a gangster? You know, like a little shit like that, you know what I'm saying? Fucking, I said, what? You want me to come downstairs to help you fight me? Is your aim so bad? No. So uh, he ended up, I talked to him about halfway across the street, his girlfriend or side bitch technically because she actually ended up alerting me to that by telling me that she'll get her boyfriend to come over, which means this guy was not her guy. It was her side guy. You know, um, he was walking halfway across the street. He was not happy and made sure to aggressively drive away at some point as well. But I laughed, and then I continued to... Because something that black people do respond well to, in my opinion and observation, is uh, trolling. You know, uh, what do they call it? Roasting. For whatever reason, I never understand it. It, it stood. It's especially popular in comedy. It's especially popular in rap music. It's the more of an asshole you are with your mouth, the more respect you're going to get. Or disrespect, similarly. So they started first, having something negative to say, right? Okay, and I get to fucking challenge them back. I would joke that woman for being fat, having rolls on her rolls on her rolls. Told her her hair looked like a fucking pencil eraser shaved down, and it did. It's all awkward pink and shit. What the fuck are you trying to be? She tried to call me gay because I had the black nails and I threw up the horns when they're trying to insult me, and I just couldn't be more thrilled to have them mad at me. Instead of the other way around, where y'all are obnoxious retards making noise 2 3 in the morning, and y'all's party was the other day. You're welcome for allowing you to have it. <laughs> So, you know, now I get to stir the pot a little bit. I'll shoot your ass with a BB from here. And I didn't really I actually shot the... This is y'all thought I had a fucking gun. That's fucking weak. Don't tell me what to do while y'all are criminals. I'm gonna give you the same fucking energy. One of them made a comment about breaking into my house. I'll come right up in that bitch. I said, that, oh, it's cool. I live on the second floor. I got plenty of time. <laughs> anyway... <laughs> Sorry some of those videos lagged. We're going to try to get a, a, a couple other ones up here for you. Because um, we do have some interesting ones. Racism. Here we go. The Clans former. I am Optimus Hate Crime. Crazy, right? What else we got? I was originally going to make a whole big uh, video on this. Let's take a look at some of these satirical moments. Would you be a deer and fetch my bag, servant girl? Unnecessary racism, so sad. It's just some nearsighted Armenian woman. I'll sue you for every penny. I don't speak Lacanese. Then my Chalfonians get away from that well, Hebrew. Who done said crap? Gun. Oh, I like the black one. Damn, I gotta get some lottery tickets. Good Oriental. Who do you think you is? I is the Board of Education. R? R? <laughs> yeah you can only imagine what i was originally going to do with this stuff instead of just share it once you a couple of them 
That's crazy, right? We got some stuff for, for racist black people that want to defend themselves. I can't even show you that. Hopefully the picture doesn't show up too good. Because I really don't want anything uh, uh, to kick me off here. But yeah, so people are stupid. Expect them to be stupid. I stand for justice. Of course, there is no just is. It's just us. And that means it's up to us. Doesn't it? That don't mean throwing fucking firebombs, blowing up buildings, hurting innocent shopkeepers, going for mob flashing, and stealing from stores. God, I think the most saddest version, now that everybody thinks crime is popular and okay, is when uh, one of the fucking people decided to loot cigarettes. God damn, that's a sad fucking life. I know white man didn't stop you from being able to have an ID, prove you're 18, and go buy smokes. I know there are better, more valuable, more healthy, and more long-lasting things. Stealing cars. Stealing pieces to cars. Stealing tasers, guns, knives. These are all wise fucking things. These are things that last. These are things that are committed to survival or transportation. Even stealing food. But to steal death cigarettes? You know, by the ass ton, knowing that you're going to abuse them because you didn't have fucking money, so you're likely, now that you have such a surplus of black privilege in this case... You know, like, uh, you're going to smoke more than what you need because there's more. Why not? That's like having pot. You know, you're already high, but you can smoke another bowl if you have a fucking pound sitting next to you. It wouldn't really hurt you to do, right? Except for the fucking smoke inhalation. <laughs> but I think that was one of the most wildest things I saw ransacked and stolen was people were robbing fucking vape shops and they were robbing tobacco stores. They even robbed a fucking Walmart. Of the tobacco area. Like, fucking, you got, like, eight people back there all getting arms worth of cartons of cigarettes and shit like that. Like, they're never gonna fucking see another one again. And I wish we were allowed to actually talk about power. I wish I was actually allowed to give my black brothers and sisters advice. And you all, whether you like it or not, sorry. I know I look like this, but we're related. Sorry, buddy. Not only uh, if there's a one ounce or one drop rule, right, where I get to be part black. Well, hypothetically, them, that means that everybody that has even a little bit of white in them is white, right? You know, but either way, let's get rid of all that rhetoric and say the humankind, the human race, people kind, since we can't say mankind anymore without offending some feminazis. Sorry, women that are aggressive like Nazis that belong to the group of feminists. You know, uh, so it's me it's human, it's human, you can't even say it, person kind. I saw this whole article, people getting kicked out of places, chair person of the board. It's a person hole cover in the ground out there for the sewage cap. It's a person hole cover. Is that the most retarded shit you've ever heard in your fucking life? So I'm surprised and I really wish I could give you advice. I'm surprised I can talk as much as I have. But surrounded with enough jokes and unrelated rhetoric, people really have to sift through to find the shit to be offended. So I guess maybe that's why it works every now and then when I do it. When I want to talk about certain things. But I really wish I could give you the answers. As a white guy. On how to win. I really wish I was allowed to sit down and have a conversation, but to use certain buzzwords would get me instantly banned. To address things as black and white, if you'll pardon the pun, as straightforward, as crystal clear, as blunt... And not as tactful, you know. If I don't baby step on PC sensitivities of how words are used, you know. Like, there's one I really want to show you. I made a meme showing you how the N-word is grammatically accurate. But not as a black person, just as an ignorant person. Or a person who goes back on deals and I broke down, like, the etymology of the word and stuff like that. Um, and I would love to show you, but I know that there's at least five different parts of this chart that could get me in trouble. Because it's over and over reiterating in different eudemological ways on how these words evolved and what they meant and stuff like that. And any given one of them could be considered offensive. So unfortunately, I just have to tell you, look forward to bitshoot.com slash KTV and I'll eventually do a video that will include that chart and also leave a download link to it. Um, more particularly, uh, it, it makes it appropriate to call a white person this word because of the structure of its definition, understanding both before... Uh, before it's uh, modern usage for slurring and slandering a colored person. So, excuse me, even with the addendum of uh, the new definitions, it would still work most appropriately if you understood the root of the word. But I really do wish I could give more advice to people. 
uh, and how to succeed in these scenarios. But if I say too much, I'm a terrorist. If I say too little, I'm a racist. Is this a, I'm in a fucked situation. I'm not a part of either fucking team. And the world is chaotic. So I'm, I have to stand up for mental health people. And maybe I don't have to. Maybe I'll take it upon myself. But I have to advocate and fight the good fight for mentally health people. There are people with autism that are in worse boats than me that can't, you know. Not to mention the learning disabled roommate and other people, you know. Uh, when it comes to the race war, I don't have to fight or engage in that one at all. But I really wish that I could arm people with the intelligence of psychology, of knowing what situations they're running into with cops. So hopefully um, I'll be taking even longer treks and chances in the near future. Once I become stabilized and I know I've got a place over my head, I'll be taking extreme risks and going and traveling and doing things too. We'll go to clubs and get thrown out. We'll go into government buildings and demand that police be called on us. And ev the whole lot. Also that we can be right in the end. But I don't mean not being challenged, challenged, arrested, or having your ass kicked temporarily. Maybe, depending. Before you prove that you're right in a court of law. We are aware that there's a corrupt system. Not a systemically just racist system, but a systemically corrupt system. A systemically powerful system. Okay? And power is held in the hands of the few. Even if black people are rising up the chain of command to be in some of those few positions. Okay? So the new issue becomes power. So hopefully we'll be able to talk about some of those things. Look forward to BitChute for that because YouTube is way too much of a center. Um, and even there, I don't know how much I can get away with. Although it seems like the it, like 4chan and YouTube had a baby on that website. Like, whoa, buddy, I can't believe what's acceptable there. Wow. Meanwhile, my favorite, uh, one of my favorite websites, Joy of Satan, used to have a channel there. And they got shut down for racism. What? But I've seen way, 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 way worse. I think the difference is that Joy of Satan would have made documentaries with that racism. Like, they would have had, like, structural videos and tons of evidence and information and stuff on why they're coming to certain conclusions, even if the racism isn't the right answer. But, like, they would have had so much shit that just would have, I mean, it would have been a structured hate. <laughs> And I imagine that a regular person bitching and ranting is probably fine on their network compared to someone giving you documents and schematics and shit, you know what I'm saying? But yeah, K, uh, KTV on BitChute. BitChute.com slash KTV. We're going to have all kinds of controversial things. Um, I have a lot planned. It's stressful, but somebody's got to do it. My battle was never over. I just wish I could sleep every now and then, man. I wish I had a safe place to be. But even if I didn't make situations larger than they already are, the point and why I'm doing it is these situations are going to occur anyway. If you're white or black, someone's going to not like you because your color might not be the same color as someone else's. And either one of you can suffer for that, depending on the person viewing the scenario or the color of the boss or the racial ideology of the boss. I mean, my landlord, black, told me about a former black roommate. I have to keep in mind where he comes from, how he was raised. First off, no, I don't. Second of all, what does that mean? I wasn't there when he was raised. Keep in mind, what, are you going to be more specific? No, you're not, because it's racist as shit. You mean, keep in mind that I'm a white person and black people have had to go to great lengths to survive, which was once true. I don't believe it's true like that now. You know, I believe we all should be just as wild, or none of us should, and quite frankly, I think we all need to overturn. Even Thomas Jefferson, uh, or was it George Washington? One of them. They both had very strong opinions about the government. They both had really strong opinions about religion. And um, one of them had suggested that it's inevitable. The time will come where we need to forcibly overthrow the government. And I'm not advocating for anybody necessarily to do that, but I think that however you reword it to say we're in desperate need of change, and change is only going to happen when not just a color decides all other colors are bad, um, I think change will only happen when we all decide to actually stand up for that change and say enough is enough. You know, like, take voting, but it would take a unanimous and near unanimous decision, and humans just like fighting too much. You know, if nobody, if there weren't, like, next to any voters, or if everybody wrote in on their voting ballot, uh, like, uh, me, they wrote myself, the word myself, or something like that, you know, they could greatly fuck up the tally of all this shit. You know, I mean, they still probably only count their legitimate votes, but you can start your protests in clever ways, you know? You can have uh, your army file in there, and at least somebody had to visually see that. You can slowly but surely convince more and more numbers to join you, just like you did with the anarchy and the violence and the firebombs and the shit that didn't work quite. Um, but if you had a leader, which you didn't, and that's one of the issues in those orders as well, um, is it's not organized chaos, it's just chaos in the alleged name of something. 
no group name to blame, so all black people get the blame instead of, you know what I'm saying? Like, like if it was ran by a guy named Paul, if Paul was the leader of BLM and it had a legitimate company, a legitimate corporation to it, you know, um, then we could blame Paul, and Paul would have held the blame, and maybe Paul might lose his job when some of these things go bad, when his representative represent him poorly, right? But Paul could be replaced with a different, uh, um, what do they call it, like a vice president, right? A vice CEO or something, you know, someone else would take Paul's position. The company, the movement, the ideas would get to continue to live, and the guy would have somebody to blame. Now, also electing a person when creating any group like this, having some kind of figurehead, also gives you direction. It gives you a guy who's helping you construct battle plan, whose structure, instead of just calls random chaos, we're going to burn down this town and get some money because we're under pros and we don't have any money, we don't have anywhere to live, so we're going to go steal cigarettes and we're going to go steal cars or whatever it is. I don't know the whole bit. But, you know, instead of it being random, like random acts of we're getting away with this and the name for that, it could be random, uh, less random acts of survival. Instead, it could be structured movements. Some of these robberies, like mob lootings, for example, where cars at Nordstrom were lined up around the block, you know, that was an organized thing, clearly. But in most cases, most of these racial issues, it's not. And most, uh, you know, most of the things I complain about, there isn't enough of an organization to counter it. Mental health, big pharma, they call it that for a reason. They're in control, you're not. And you're not doing anything to change the laws. One person can't do it on its own. Create enough outrage, create a big enough army, though, you can. But the outrage or the violence or the fact that everybody's screaming and burning things down isn't going to change that. That just makes the people who already needed mental health or whatever fucking suffer more. You know, because now they're criminals, too. It didn't necessarily solve it. But let's say hypothetically that they targeted certain politicians. Let's say hypothetically that they targeted certain groups, certain locations that might have a big impact on other things, cause and effect like dominoes to topple. Just the scare alone might be a powerful thing. Might be more powerful than actually burning down or blowing up a building, actually. And it's all because it was thought through and structured. Instead of, I'll show you we ain't weak. You know, like, that's not going to help. Actually, it's going to show all the stereotypes. Oh, if black people are violent, then why are not violent? Why are they going around doing violence? If, if black people are not criminals and doing whatever the percentage, because racists will throw that shit around all the time, of the crime, then uh, why are they doing more crime than ever? Why are the crimes bigger and better and more explosive, quite literally, than ever before? You know, like, that's clearly not working, because there's not a structured head. There's not... How do I say it? Uh... It's just not structured because it isn't just about the leader. You're not going to get a structured movement if you have all of these different ideologies. It's like the LGBTQ, PIA plus O, other. You know, uh, that's confusing because it started as lesbian and gay rights. Bi already is gay. It's half gay. It doesn't make any sense to have the B. It's half lesbian or half gay. And a lesbian is a gay person, and a gay person is a lesbian. It just denotes gender, which we wanted to get rid of, I guess. So, as the acronym got longer and longer, my point is that you have hundreds of letters on this shit now, and they're all different types of minds, different types of emotions, different ideologies entirely, different skin colors, different groups, essentially. By calling them one thing and trying to pretend it's a movement accomplishing something is absurd. It's disorganized or organized disorganization. It's chaos, man. So it's, it's not going to help any of those people do anything more than squabble amongst each other, which is the goal of the elites manipulating a lot of this information, or so we're told by some other conspiracy theorists. I can't exactly give you my opinion or lay that out so black and white, but I can say that some people believe it. Some people believe that our media and governments and things are controlled in such a way to keep us perpetually fighting each other. Our racial disorders, for example. Black versus white, or it's left versus right. Divide and conquer and control is the payer of... Screaming from the rooftops, beat down, batter, turn us on each other till no lives matter. Tom McDonald again. It's fucking crazy, man. So what I do is for a purpose, I have to. And I'm going to die one day doing it, almost guaranteed. One day I'll find a battle that I couldn't think through enough in advance. Or someone will have a gun and decide to shoot first and ask questions later. But it's weird, even the criminals seem to be smarter waiting for a reason to actually attack back. Like, rhetoric is rhetoric. It didn't used to be like that. Back in the day, you just get shot. And maybe I just haven't been so unlucky. There's shell casings up and down my street. But <laughs> I'm going to keep fighting the good fight. I'm going to fight the good fight for all of us to end racism. I'm going to fight the good fight for us to end the mental health abuse in the system. And I think the bigger uh, war is against the system rather than against racism. Because racism 
You could say, oh, it's not their fault, they said. Ashley Shackelford, retard extraordinaire, um, who actually failed to be an LGB advocate and then moved on to Black Lives Matter when she wasn't making enough money. If you do your research in the past, you'll find that she was allegedly self-proclaimed the biggest advocator for them, too, at one point in time. That shit failed horribly. She looked like a fucking clown. Like a, She had, like, Grimace, like, from, you know, who Grimace is, right? From... Ronald McDonald, the purple dude, like grimace eyeshadows, is like black and purple. She looked like she got beat up and was like, he, like she, she's the offspring of grimace and a Smurf. If they had a baby together, like this is the person, and she's saying that all white people can't help it. It's automatically they're demons. Talk about rhetoric. They're demons, and that they're automatically born racism, racist. There's nothing they can do about it. So what's the complaint? Why are you asking Whitey for more? That doesn't make any goddamn bit of sense. It's, it's all the word war, folks. They want to get you so busy arguing over words and arguing over how you feel instead of the facts or information that you can't actually solve any of the issues. So you're so focused on the minor details that you can't actually go tackle it. Well, I think the N-word should be illegal or something like that, say, for example. If we get you focusing on the minor details instead of racially motivated attacks, that physical assault is much worse, or that uh, if we're starting to police words, then there's also words that you wouldn't be allowed to say, which would just create further turmoil. You wouldn't be allowed to say cracker anymore. You wouldn't be allowed to say white people be like and have a stand-up routine that encourages racism as you have for decades. You know, um, Everybody would have to change. And I, I don't think people are thinking through the rhetoric of, of how these different wars work. You know, They're wanting to point a finger. It's everybody else's fault all the fucking time. There is a way to power, though. There is a way. And nowadays, though, power is kind of trolling and bullying their way to the top. You know, Donald Trump pretty much said everybody else wasn't shit. Uh, exposed a few secrets about a couple people. Gaslit them about the same things he was involved with. Just to... Because we're not allowed to talk about those things. It's the secret club, man. You're part of the Illuminati. You're part of Bohemian Grove's little ritual. I was invited to it, but just turned it down. Yeah, no. You know, meanwhile, you use every hand gesture and every uh, occult artifact and every symbol that they do. Yeah, right. You got your white power hand symbol. This is white power, just so you know, folks. If you ever see a politician doing this, if you see them do this, this is different. This is the Gian Mudra. This stimulates wisdom and memory. The pointer finger representing air, the air element, which is mind, mentality, right? So you're allegedly stimulating that, even if only psychologically. You know, you're pinching a nerve, and then I only do this during certain times. So as long as I'm only doing this during those times, it becomes what's called anchored. So the subconscious mind pulls this up, like pulling out a folder, right? And inside that folder is both this symbol and the state of mind and the thought process they were in. So this, in the future, might help bring them back immediately there. Okay, so that's the Gian Mudra, G-Y-A-N. However, this is actually a lot harder to do on instinct. Do that a couple times. Feel how weird this is. Go to pinch your finger <coughs> and then go try to misfire. And the reason for that is W-P. And you'll notice your SNL actors. You'll notice a lot of your people doing this. Jimmy Kimmel. Um, they'll, and they laugh. Like if someone calls them out, like um, uh, Jim Carrey talking about the Illuminati and playing it off as a joke later... He had the guy laughing, nervous, red face. <laughs> what the fuck are you doing? Without saying what the fuck are you doing out loud. Um, didn't know what to do when Jim Carrey was advertising the new Dumb and Dumber movie. Um, and the all-mocking tongue. That's a real thing, by the way. Complete with the tongue. This, Spock, right? Leonard Nimoy and Star Trek. Done together? Shaddai. Hebrew for Lord. Okay. Look at old Hebrew gravestones. Done with or without a tongue. And written with Hebrew or with the rest of it. Okay. That's a real thing. So he did it as a joke. He called it the all-mocking tongue. And made sure in all four directions, north, east, west, south, fire, air, earth, water, to go, that's not in the right order, but, you know, to show the audience and everyone around him invocating. You may have also noticed Jay-Z doing it. Yeah, you're not even allowed to look at this symbol if you're a real believer. And you'll notice Satanists doing it in reverse. As if to blaspheme. Almost always over the solar plexus area. So yeah, he made a joke about it and, I mean, they laugh it off or whatever, but they're the kinds of people that do this, not do this. They'll pretend to reach in their pocket or adjust their jacket or their glasses or, most commonly, there are two Freemason gestures that are used all the time. One's the hidden hand. If you've never pulled anything out of your pocket, why do you keep reaching for it? That's been a symbol for a really, really long time. 
the hidden hand. And it says about as much as it doesn't say. They're the ones in control. They're the deceptive ones. There's things that you don't know behind the scenes. And the other one is this. And they'll almost always do it if they're wearing a tie or a lapel microphone. They'll pose for photographs where it just looks like they're pulling down their tie. But if you pinch something, try to pinch anything. Go pick something up off your table. It's really weird for you to want to pick it up halfway down your finger. Okay? So we're fighting racism, but not so much. We're really fighting power, and we're fighting cults. And even though there are black people in these cults nowadays, they are taught a lot of the same stuff. And the ideology, the symbology, the power structure, all that isn't just racially motivated. But... The, the hand symbols, if you ask a lot of gang members, for example, why they do certain noises or say certain things and expressions, how many bricks on the red brick road, the whole bit, um, you're going to not get a good enough answer. They don't know why. They just know it's the response, like any cult, that they're taught. Alistair Crowley's, for example, in the cult of the Lima. Um, do what thou will shall be the whole of the law, cult member one might say. And the cult member two, to show that they're in on it would say, love is the law, love under will. Okay, love by choice, right? Or love by force through my will. Gotta love that Crowleyan dialect, okay? So that's, now, most people might not know the original teachings, the original book, or whatever. They just know that whenever an initiate says this, they're supposed to say that. They might not even know the context of the words that they're saying. But they've been passing it down, gang member to gang member to gang member, person to person, family to offspring to offspring. That it loses meaning, like most hieroglyphs, like most words, okay? People don't say gentation anymore, but I know it still means breakfast. But we're out to say it to you today, it might confuse you. Being lost to time, if you're not 1300s and earlier. So, uh, the same thing will happen with these symbols and with words, or a black guy empowering you and calling you cracker while trying to piss you off, but calling you a master. A master ass whooper. They lose sight of the information. They're just taught to go down the line. This is the way we behave. This is the way we talk. This is the way our hand symbol should go. That's a Trumpian one. But even Trumpian is a little bit higher up. That might be flicking away the energies and minds of all these people that try to keep themselves put together. He quite literally kind of doesn't like that, don't he? I thought it was fucking a brilliant rendition. A modification of the old spell, personally. Kind of brilliant. Whether psychological or not, pretty brilliant way to handle your own mind. Keep yourself in check. So I think we need to fight the systems in place. What happens if a black person graduates Christianity? He starts charging other people to lie to them with the same symbols, tools, throws up the horns, even though he's allegedly raising God, adjusts his tie with the white power symbol, because all he knows is the masters before him that once had all the power of money did the same shit. This is the code. This is how you act. And this is how you talk when you're a pastor. And everybody does it. Or, if you want to mimic certain white people, then everything is in vibrato. And God said unto Abraham, fuck his shit up. Or something like that. You know, I hope you've enjoyed this presentation. I had the time. Keeps me sane. You know, talking about it. We're, we're, all, we're going through all kinds of wars. Expect documentaries. There are long projects in the work. Expect them, but expect them long. And expect them a ways from now when they're completed and they're perfect. And we'll do little videos from time to time. And as soon as I move, we'll do songs every day again. Or as soon as I get internet in a new place after I move, when I can find a new place, there's so many obstacles. Um, and if not, I'll find a way to make sure at least once a week to still be doing that. Right after I find out if it's impossible. You know, or maybe I'll get a data package, or I'll go to public libraries, or I'll do whatever. But we'll get back into the daily song making thing. We'll still make sure to have videos from time to time. They'll be less live, obviously, if I don't have regular internet access and more pre-recorded. But we got the technology. We got the space, the hard drives, the computers, the cameras, and stuff. We've been slowly building. This camera's 2K, USB. Um, I got one of these phones. It's also a 2K camera and a 128 gigabyte SD card. So we'll figure it out. We'll definitely make sure you guys get your updates. Obviously, if you enjoy anything that I do, you enjoy the controversy, you want to point at me and call me a retard, you want to laugh at me that I'm the mentally ill one and in the wrong, four thumbs down, though, to 32 thumbs up is pretty fucking good, if you ask me. That's a great ratio. And 2.1 thousand views in a single fucking day, that's pretty good, if you ask me. All because I'm willing to sit in a car with some bitch. Some terrorist, some argumentator, because I'm willing to go talk to cops, and because I'm willing to fucking let people be mad longer instead of just running away to safety. Oh no, no, save me, help, help! 
And then the white person's expected to call police. No, no, y'all can call police. I'll just wait till you do it, and then I'll handle it properly. That's power. That's knowing the game. And again, I wish, and, and I'll try to find a way. It might backfire. You know, white people will be the next slaves. It's very obvious. Re-education camps, huh? <laughs> Alrighty then. <laughs> um, but I'll try it my best. Maybe we'll come up with some tutorial videos. We already started School for Evil and kind of skewed it a bit. Um, but I can give uh, black power classes, I suppose. How to succeed with white people. Take it from me, whitey. <laughs> that sounds like a great slogan already. How to win with the white man. I'm whitey. Or something. But then again, I've heard so many black people with the nickname Whitey or Oreo and stuff that it might take away from it. So uh, maybe I'll just have to stick with the white devil shtick. But you don't have to take my word for it. I am the enemy kind of shit. White devil, white devil. More, more, more fun stereotypes to point out with. Since we want to talk about global conspiracies a little bit, we want to talk about real power. We mentioned the triangle. Okay, notice the pyramid. Notice the pyramid within the the eye within the pyramid. Or Ariman, right? Okay, notice Eminem's necklace. Notice Jay-Z doing this. Who would end up getting in trouble again. Legally. This is a guy so egotistical, so evil, that he told other pastors, I think it was Joel Olstein at the time, to shut up. I can't, for some reason, I guess, God can't work through a person when other people are talking. Weird. <laughs> like, just like you're 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 fucking up the divine flow of consciousness. Shut up! I really need you to shut up. He told a professional pastor, who has millions of followers, billions and trillions of dollars, on his own show while leeching off of his audience because his music is just so fucking bad. And he's gotten like, he's went to the mental hospital just way too many times for talking about like bugs and, and, and like bugs as in technology in your teeth and. Like, and that's not really one of the claims, but he comes off like a wild schizophrenic. The whole world's out to get you. It's some schizo shit, and, you know, uh, he, he killed one of his whole own concerts. Y'all came out to hear some music, right? Wrong! He didn't say that, but he spent the entire hour and a half losing his fan base. Talking about the people in control. Having a mental and emotional breakdown. And, you now there's some, some vagueness that inspires all schizophrenics. But imagine that ego. This is a guy who would piss in some child's face. <laughs> okay. That everybody can forgive because Hollywood's weirds like that. We'll forgive all the satanic cultists if they're in Hollywood. <laughs> you have no idea who Satan is. You have no idea what power is. You have no idea who the people who advocate for these kind of words and ideas are. And they always do it in the guise and the illusion for God while they go against everything their religions and deities are usually claiming. Don't do witchcraft. Don't say the same thing over and over a mantra like the pagans do. See no, hear no, speak no evil. Not see more, speak more, hear more, spend time around more evil. That's how you end up evil. It's also how you have evil kick your fucking ass and don't have the light and the love and the prosperity and the success of God because you chose to continue to visit dens of iniquity, right? Okay. This is a guy with such a high ego that he said he should be in the Bible. Yeah, that's it since the 90s for that one. Interrupted a pastor. Fucking t uh, shut up. Whoa. Whoa, not be quiet, not excuse me, not could you just dot, dot, dot. Shut up. God's working through me, and I guess he just didn't give you the same information. <laughs> All right. So that's another video that'll come soon, too. That's one way easier to put together. I have tons of material on it as well. Um, and I'll make a documentary style. I'll try to make it about an hour and a half or so. Um, and, and I wanted to include a lot more. So I'll make a second one in the future. Because if especially if I go homeless. If I go homeless, I know exactly what shelter I'm going to unfortunately go back to. And by unfortunate, I mean I'm going to willingly go back um, so that I can capture some data. And you're going to notice all kinds of occult practices while you watch people leave for the hospital every single day out of an alleged house of God and shelter. You have to go to church. Union Mission Ministries in Norfolk, Virginia, um, to be able to, and not just church, night church has to be church at night. You miss it, you don't come back in at the right time, you don't stay a good slave while they take your money. We'll get to that in another one, but there's just so many bad practices, and, and a documentary that will definitely come soon, I'll make it a multi-part series, but I want a documentary like length, like I wanted a good hour minimum per episode. Um, we'll cover corrupt Christianity. 
okay? And uh, just to give you a few examples off the top of my head, during COVID times, the Pope shooting babies in the face with water pistols. Okay. Well, we, we can't touch them. Okay, throw a vial of water at them, you sick fuck. <laughs> or how about another Pope story? Smacking a baby in the face. Smacking it in the fucking face, you stupid fucking baby. You shut your goddamn fucking mouth. Without saying those words, of course. Just... Shh, it's okay, it's okay. Shh. Literally, over and over and over to the point where the parents were so fucking violently shocked and appalled. They were trying to rip the baby's limbs off to get the fucking kid away from the pastor in question. That's some sick shit. Trying to drive the demons out of a baby by fucking beating it to death? Fighting against the owners of that baby? You know, I believe in that humans should be owned. You know, slavery is not okay, but you get the point. Beat the shit out of my arm for that stunt. <laughs> That's fucked up, man. That's not okay. We've got stories coming out of Africa where fucking guys are making out with, uh, their, with your new wife. Just to bless your marriage, of course, and drive out any demons. Because as we all know, if a good Christian man helps you with adultery on the day of the fucking wedding, <laughs> you're surely blessed. I call you blessed. Who calls you blessed, as they like to say with their witchcraft? I, not God, not Jesus. I call you blessed. We can learn from these Christians, folks. And we're going to learn a hell of a lot. Because you're going to learn just how much witchcraft, and that's just in volume one. You're going to learn way more corruption in volume two. But we're going to focus on some of the arts used and just a few corrupt examples in volume one. I think corrupt Christianity, or Christianity gone corrupt. Yeah, it's way better. Christianity gone corrupt will be uh, excellent to show you. Why is a pastor... They talk about the horns. They talk about the beast. Pagans even call it the great horned god. Why the fuck would you do this or this? That's strange. Unless you know, and so do a lot of Hebrews. Higher up the knowledge in that. The Taurus within the hand. The shape of Y. Hebrew letters and stuff with their hand is such a magnificent fucking language, dude. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? No, you don't, but you will. <laughs> all right, that's about all the time I have for this shit. Two and a half hours. This is one of my longest ones yet. I think three is my longest, personally. Lots of stuff coming. I made this spontaneous just because I had the time and I wanted to have some fun. And it kind of helps me. Because it helps me focus and kind of lay out a battle plan for the future and stick to it more. Uh, by building expectations, really. And some of the shit might get twisted, but... I haven't made any promises I can't keep this time. We're slowing everything else down. You'll get that documentary or the first installment of it in the near future. Very near future. I'm going to start working on it tomorrow. Um, I do still have to prepare for a court case that comes up in six days and another one that comes up in 24. Um, but I will make the time, and it is actually really easy to put that together. I've collected a lot of material in here. Um, I don't know if you saw some of the names of some of these folders, but I'll let you see this here. Um... If you can see here, we have anti-black. What that really means is there's statistics, information, and things that will be triggering to African Americans. Um, and it really is to start, to, or to stop, but I guess start up conversation and it kind of cross wires. Um, to stop a lot of the racism, to debuff and debunk some of the claims commonly made and then move on to where we can have a conversation. So, um, I'm glad that picture is so fucking small because I'm pretty sure if you could see that thumbnail, that'd be entirely inappropriate as it's meant to be. Um, we have a uh, gay agenda, right? Okay, we've heard about this stuff. Is it really an agenda or not? Well, according to some of them, it is. But, of course, that's only speculation. But mostly, we're going to cover some of the things that I agree with and the science behind it all. And there is some truth that can support some of these people in the science. However, there's much more that's the exact opposite. We'll also, of course, talk about gender, which is very closely related. Um, which, uh, you know, I mean, bored in the wrong body. Back in the day, that's schizophrenia. Okay. I'll even go as far as a spiritual person to say multi-souled. Okay, cool. But it still makes you born a male. The main you is a male. The main persona, regardless of any other spirit, which also to the Gr Greeks meant thought. Um, you know, anything else that you embody 
or decide to play around with in consciousness still doesn't make you... It, you can be the new thing, too, mind you. Like, I can be Betty if I want to, starting right now, and I can be a female and Betty, and I'm right. But it doesn't negate that I'm also Kevin and a male. No matter what I do, it won't. So we'll talk a little bit about the gender wars in there, too, uh, with what little bit of room we have. Luckily, in America, we can still say a couple comments. Um, but in a lot of places, even in America, you, there's colleges where you get thrown out if someone doesn't even tell you, but believes that they're a female and they are an overly obese male with a full beard, the whole bit. They can have a full beard, but guys can have babies now and all this stuff too, allegedly, which obviously, you know, they can't, um, at least not that I've seen. Maybe there's some truth out there and they found some miracle science. Maybe Arnold Schwarzenegger and Danny DeVito in junior finally pulled it off. <laughs> well, I don't know. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I'd love to explore some of that, so we will. These are folders because there is a lot of material on each of these things that will grow exponentially until I'm ready to put it into a very cohesive, structured documentary-like video. I want to lay it out. I want the science laid out. I want it to be slowed down. I don't want to be going 90 miles a minute. I want people to really receive the information, and I also want to open up the floor for people to argue or come in with their alternative opinions. This is not about dominating the world. Because that's what the world's always done. You know, they just dominate it. If it's my talk show, for example, usually how that works is I can shut you down anytime I want. I can keep you talking just long enough to be triggered and shut you down, Tucker Carlson. And I like Tucker. He's really good because he knows the game. But that's exactly why I like him. That doesn't make him entirely right. Most of his opinions, I share most of them. Um, but not all of them. And I know what power is, and he just knows how to use it. And I personally just love that he looks like Spider-Man from the original live-action Spider-Man line. Down to the confused face. Like, if, if I could show you a picture, and I will definitely when it comes down to another video. Um, I took a screenshot from the live-action Spider-Man. I think it was in the 70s. And I took a picture of Tucker with one of them and put them side by side. And they look uncanny, they're almost identical. Like, the Peter Parker in the suit back then is Tucker Carlson. The way he talks, the facial expressions, I don't know if it's like something taught in these rich ivory schools or how that works, but he adopted the same mannerisms, the same haircut, the whole bit. So we'll have stuff to touch on that. We'll have stuff to touch on cop abuse and whatnot. School for evil, right? Uh, and even cartoons that encourage witchcraft. With some very interesting, and for those of you who want some ideas for spells, some of them are really cool fucking ideas. Whether or not you can accomplish them or not is a whole other thing. But they give you some interesting ideas, like soul switching. Yeah, and I know that's possible. But uh, they give a really weird ritual for it. So maybe you just didn't know where to begin and how to imagine that possibility. Now you got your rituals and cartoons. So far I've only got those two in there, but I have several other references I have to to record and, and chop out but yeah so that's some of the stuff that'll come in the near future so you do know that there are projects in the work however long you end up waiting all of those things will vary um all right my name is kevin chaos real name kevin la liberty i am a chaos magician i am a satanist unless you ask me while doing chaos magic and maybe i'm a christian nah I am here to stir the pot. The world is a fucked up place and it is in need of reform. It is in need of reform. And that means somebody has to be the devil. You guys need people like me. Someone to point your fucking fingers at and say he's the bad guy, right? Scarface. Butchered quote. You guys need it. Without the white devil to blame, there is no black power to rise. You know, there is... What? What do you mean? There's no enemy to fight? So what is the power you're trying to raise? Then we're already good, right? Cool. But, yeah. <laughs> so I have no problem. I've slowly embraced over the years that I am whatever you say I am. If I wasn't, then why would I say I am? In the paper, the news, and every cop... And violent Neanderthal pulling a gun on me. Every day I am. Uh, fucking around. Eminem, right? My name is, I think. I uh, am. Is that what my name is? It's been so long. It's really long time since I was 10. <laughs> um, but it is what it is. This is what I aim to do. And, and my point is, 
I'm going to fight every fight until I die during one of them. And I'm going to do it with gusto. I'm going to do it with pride. Don't get me confused with some of these groups. When I say pride, I mean what it means. If people in LGBTQ had pride, they would not need outfits for it. They would be comfortable. They would be more than happy to say, Oh, yeah, I'm gay and proud of it. Fuck you, bitch. Mm -hmm. But that's not what they fucking do, is it? No, it's outrage that other people aren't wearing the same suits. That they don't have flags in your classroom and stuff. That's not pride. That's like... What is it? Not victimization. Um, It's weakness. Fuck it. It's weakness. If you are so proud, what do you need my approval of? What do you need me to agree or not for? Why do you need the world to mimic or accept you at all? You're already good. You're already proudful. You're exactly comfortable in your own skin, doing your own thing. So there ain't no fucking pride there. But that's just my opinion, of course. Now, I represent a different kind of pride. Kevin Chaos, for better or for worse. Till death do us part. <laughs> Kevin Chaos is fucking chaotic. It's in the goddamn name. There's no false advertisement. And I stand for justice. And that means for everybody. That means for the Satanists. That means for the Christians. It means we got to get our shit together. It means for the black people. It means for the white people who's having to fucking defend themselves against black people with their uprise of power who having to defend themselves against white people from their once held positions of power. We all need it. Now, I'll tell you something Satan said. Allegedly. Oh, I will lead people through Armageddon and I will arm them with wisdom. I'm butchering this quote. I will arm the men and balance the tides that humans can solve their differences in the only way that they've learned to understand. It is not war that I wish to wage, but defense of my home, earth, and its tenants, person kind. Okay, let's break that down a little bit. Satan, very similar to the word satya, Sanskrit for truth. Satya is truth. Now, arming you with that truth, which you may continue to exploit and abuse should you choose to wage war against one another. If we give all sides information, all sides have that information. If we teach all sides the art of fighting, all sides have the art of fighting. There is nobody with power in the way that we've understood it before. Everything that I stand for is about teaching people wisdom from psychology, how to talk to anybody, get whatever you want. Whether you choose to call it manipulation or not, it is. When you're born as a baby, you cry and manipulate for the tit, even though you were already fed and you don't need more. But you know that that reaction gets you a certain reaction, so well, you're a free booby. Okay? Um, so we teach psychology. We teach power for the sake of power's sake. And there will be the occasional person who abuses power. As there always have been since the dawn of time, any time everyone's discovered it, whether on their own or with the aid of some kind of apprenticeship. Okay? But, that will sort itself out. Because the more people that know and understand power, psychology, rhetoric, conversational hypnosis, neuro-linguistic programming, color therapy, uh, light therapy... Uh, sound therapy, uh, brain binaural stimulation, monaural stimulation, uh, and it goes on and on and on, even uh, anchoring, uh, mentalism. There are a million and one paths of power that you really don't know and therefore is power over you. These patterns work. They exist in your brain, in your biology, in your chemistry, and in your subconscious mind. The human brain loves patterns and it conforms to them quite well. Despite your best attempt to contradict your zodiac sign even, you're going to find those, those qualities just leaking through. Because no matter how much you try to run away from being what you are, which is essentially a human or a person, person kind, got to get used to that shit, um, you can't run away from the fact that that's what you are. That's too bad. All the masks, all the outfits you adorn, too bad. But what we can teach you is you can continue to make those choices. You can be whoever, whatever, however you want. But if you want to do it successfully, you're going to have to know how to act, how to talk to, how to behave, how to do what others do to survive them. Because we share this world for the time being until you go German-like and exterminate every single person that doesn't share your ideology 
you have to share this world with other people, other systems, other beliefs, other sets of actions. So the best we can hope for on every single one of these subjects, whether it be big pharma problems and solutions, whether it be Black Lives Mattress, which is what I jokingly call Black Lives Matter, except for when it comes to black people and where those funds go and all these movements and other things that we can look at eventually. Um, so I joke it to say Black Lives Mattress because many of them are still ending up out on the streets or other bad things happening and instead of all of the aid and all of the support and all the changes promised to be done with all these fundraisers and all this violence and all this other shit. Um, I want to teach power. That's it. No more, no less. If I get harmed doing it, that's what's going to happen. If I get attacked doing it, that's what's going to happen. If I get legal charges to, to prove a point, that's what's going to happen. But especially if I beat and often do a lot of legal circumstances. You know, I call it winning on the way out. The only thing I'm really worried about is relocating. That's it. I have to find another roof over my head. Every little fight.